Hello, everybody, and welcome oh to <laughs> the show that I'm. I was look. I'm very. I'm looking forward to this. That's what I'm trying to say. It's the NHL season preview uh, for the 2018 season. It's me and Bobby today. Your hockey experts. Oh, of and course, hockey experts. experts. Yeah. Do you know how much sources we we probably stole and took off of for this? Oh yeah. I mean. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we're going to go, uh, I'll kind of just break it down how we're going to go through this. Uh, we have a list of every single team in the league, uh, where we got headlines, we got, uh, stats, we got stories, uh, and we're going to go through each and every team. Uh, we're going to start in the Metro, go to the Atlantic, Central, and Pacific, and how we have it, um, laid out is how they, the teams finished last year, uh, in their divisions. And like I said, we'll give, uh. A brief, hopefully, uh, you know, segment on each team and, and kind of go from there. And then at the end, we have our predictions for the playoffs, our predictions for the five-man awards, and the predictions are, are way too early Stanley Cup prediction. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, because we have a lot to get to today, uh, let's get into it with the yeah, first uh, team. Can I just say, though, real quick that, uh, <laughs> first of all, holy shit, we were way over our heads oh yeah on this sure. uh as two people who actually have somewhat of other factors of their lives mm. going on and the fact that i want to give a shout out to tyler for taking moses research slash he has not slept yet and it's 9 a.m on a sunday mm-hmm. he has not slept <laughs> yet because he's trying to finish this up and we still never fully finished but we I have mean, we, we got a lot I, i'm uh yeah. like i said i you know, got to put in the work. And, like, I, I was looking forward to this, so. Yeah, yeah so let, let us get Let us get into it, <clears throat> excuse yep. me, with the first team, uh, the Stanley Cup champion, Washington Capitals, uh, starting out of the Metro. Uh, they had 105 points last year, 49 wins, 26 losses, uh, seven overtime losses. Uh, a little bit of change with them. Uh, you know, we you had Barry Trotz going to the Islanders, so you bring in Todd Reardon, who uh, has been with the team since 2014. Uh, he was responsible for the Capitals' blue line uh, for the four seasons he was uh, with them, and they ranked second in goals and second best in goals against. Sorry, uh, so uh, looking good there. Um, defensive coach, um, one of the guys that got paid because of him, John Carlson, uh, resigned over the summer, uh, which was a big uh, talking point because um, they weren't sure if they're going to be able to resign him. Cap wise, uh, he had a really good season last year, but they get him signed to an eight year, $64 million uh, contract. Um, he had 15, <clears throat> excuse me, had 15 goals and 53 assists in 2017 18. Uh, also had 20 points in the playoffs to Washington's championship. Uh, and Carlson was the highest scoring defenseman in the NHL during the regular season of playoffs. So, well worth that uh, eight, eight uh, times eight deal. Uh, one of the signings, I, I want to get your take on this for sure, uh, <laughs> that a lot of people criticized, uh, Tom Wilson. Uh, everybody loves him. That's definitely yeah. not the case. Uh, resigned uh, for six years five point, uh, for $5.17 million uh, a season. Uh, now, you know, they won the Stanley Cup. He, had, he put, played an important role, right? But... He- let me just – I'll just put the stat line out there. He had 14 goals and 21 assists for 35 points last season. And in the 391 regular season NHL games, 35 goals, 69 assists, and that's what a $5.17 million player looks like. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Bobby, your take on this because I, I, I want to hear. <laughs> I don't think – that's it, Chief. Um, I really don't. Um, if we're if we're looking at if we're looking at um, stats, yeah, he's nowhere close to worth this contract, mm. right? I mean, there are there are players who will put. The, so his career stats at three hundred three over three hundred games. Uh his thirty five goals, six nine said there are guys who will do that in a season or two. Yeah, like, probably 
probably more true, but possible, yeah. Right. I mean, I here's the way I look at him. Right, like he pisses me off because he's he's just that asshole player, right? I mean, he here's the thing though. He that role is still a relevant piece of 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 being the guy who annoys the other player. Oh yeah, the the pest. Right. Yeah, it it it's 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 something you hate to see, but you hate to see it. You hate to see it, but that's really like if he can if he can continue to be the pest that he is while still putting up some numbers, like some numbers, and then um you know, letting Obi and, and, and all those guys the, the rest of them just kinda do the scoring really. I mean maybe he's worth maybe he's that extra piece and that's what they thought, right? I mean yeah, I mean they had him. They had him playing with Ovechkin and um, <clears throat> Backstrom on that first line last year in the playoffs, which just so weird to say. But you know what? He did. He he got paid for his role. Like, I, well, I I shouldn't say it like that. Like he he's one of the best in in what he does, which is being right. the best. Uh, and look, I mean his his numbers aren't the greatest ever, but he was a he was a key part for sure in the yeah, in the run it's... they made last year. Like um, it, it's actually he actually yeah. for all intents and purposes had a pretty good playoff. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Like numbers wise, we're looking at you know twenty one games played. He had fifteen points in twenty one games with eleven yeah. with an eleven plus rating. Yeah, I mean, well, <laughs> but you know the 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 stats I read before are not the most flattering, but uh, like I said, he's he's a key piece of that team, and you never know. I mean, right. Playing- with Ovechkin and Backstrom next year for the whole year, if that's what they decide to do, I can mm-hmm. see him being a 40, 45 point guy. Um, Maybe. I mean, he, so here's the thing with him, right? So they're not paying him a lot, a lot of money, right? Like, right. They're not even paying him a million a year, like, because it's no, 5 million this, in six this years. Is, this is five for a year. It's five. It's a, Five points. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. oh, okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, you have it worded. We have it worded weird on the notes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um. Okay. So he's getting five million a year. Right. Yes. <laughs> that changes everything, huh? It, it kind of does. I. It's, it's early in the morning. I'm forgetting his contract. Um. Yeah. Okay. So he's getting five mil six years. Yeah. No. I. I. I don't think he. He may be worth a million a year, but not five million a year. I mean, it's. <laughs> a few, I, it's he's so weird to talk about, man. Like he, he, I don't see him as a guy even remotely worth that. But I guess to hint to to the Capitals organization, it's like okay, he's he's this weird kind of non point scoring key part of our game that we kind of need, right? Um, but I would have thought they would have offered that to somebody else or maybe even a a prospect. Because their prospect pool is insane. Have you seen their prospect pool? Like, I would have thought they would have yeah. saved that for someone I, coming up. Look, I mean, I think the bottom line with this is that they, I, th- I mean, I, th- it's an overpayment for sure. Um, but uh, you know, they, they, it worked last year for them. Um, yeah. Kind of see what happens. I think, like I said, I think you know, depending on, uh, on, um. I'm assuming he's going to play with Backstrom and Ovechkin because he did it in the playoffs and it worked. Mm-hmm. You know that could be something. Here's um, the other thing too. He's yeah, 24. Right. He's 24. Yeah, yeah. He's he's young. He's uh, young. He he, he still has room to grow. I mean, he does. I don't think he'll ever be like a 55, 60 point guy, but he could be. Like I said, I think he could be a 45 point guy. Uh, mm-hmm. Is that what you pay? You know, five point. You know, one seven a year for. I don't know. Salary caps going up. I guess that's all I have to say about that. Um, but the uh, other big storyline right. from the uh, <laughs> the Capitals sure. this year, which to me this actually could be a bigger deal than it looks. So the Capitals trade a Brooks Orr pick and uh, Philip Grubauer to the Colorado Avalanche for the 47th pick. Now they got so Orr pick went to the Avalanche and got bought out, and then he resigned with the Capitals for. Um, like I think it was a million dollars. The the thing that's interesting about this trade is Philip Grubauer because he 
actually took a lot of time away from Holtby. If you remember, he actually started the first two games of the playoffs last year. And he, so he played 28 games? Yeah, 28 games. Uh, he had a 2.35 goals against average with a 9.23 save percentage, which is which is good. Um, I mean, and then yeah. you look on the flip side, like Holpe, like had a 2.99 goals against average with a 9.07 uh, save percentage in 54 games. Um, and like I said, they they relied on uh, on him. In the playoffs, like I said, he played the first two games. They end up losing. They go to Holpe, and then the rest is history. Uh, but you know, they they felt that at the time he was he was worth uh, you know throwing in there. Now you look at the Capitals. You got Holpe, obviously still there. But then you got Phoenix Copley, uh, who is you know I think his second year in the league. Uh, if I mean, sure, like I, you know, I feel like. I feel like uh, a, a good backup goalie is more important to than people realize. Yeah. Uh, and and Grubauer is one of those guys that is a fringe starter. Um, so, yeah, that could be a big storyline. But, hey, you know what? The Capitals won the Stanley Cup last year. Um, I was going to say, I mean, listen, Holby during the regular season, he did not have a career season. I mean, for all intents no. and purposes, right? So, um you know, looking from so in 2016 and 2017 regular season, he had a, a uh, 9.25 save percentage with 2.07 goals against average, and uh, 2017 2018 he had 2.99 uh, goals against with a 0. 0.907 save percentage. Um, man, didn't even have didn't even have a shutout in regular season. Didn't know that. Damn. Yeah, I don't know that either. Uh, uh, that's crazy. But but then he turned up in the playoffs. I mean. He, yeah. had a, he had a 2.16 goals against average in the playoffs with a, a 0.922 save percentage and two shutouts. So doesn't and, even matter. Uh, and the greatest save in Washington Capitals history. <laughs> Dude, I listen, I know that save has been talked to death, but I straight jumped out of my chair. Yeah. I could not believe that save. That was just remarkable. Incredible, yeah. All right, we move on to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Finished second in the Metro last year. Shit. Uh, 100 points even. Uh, interesting summer for them because, uh, you know, the 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 one move they made, um, it, again, might not seem like a big deal, but they traded Connor Sherry and Matt Hunwick to the Buffalo Sabres for a conditional fourth-round pick. Um, I don't know what the condition on that fourth-round pick is. Uh, it might have to do with... Uh, the resigning of Sherry, I don't know. Uh, either way, Connor Sherry was one of those those good uh, depth players, uh, which you know, you, to be a, a successful team in this league, you need good depth, good depth, cheap players. Um, yep. and, and that's Sherry. Uh, I, I really liked him on Pittsburgh. So, if you want a good example, look at the Vegas Golden Knights. I mean, if the yeah. Vegas Golden Knights. <laughs> Do not show everybody that you need depth, not just a couple first round picks yep. on your lineup. Then I don't know what to tell you. That's literally how they got into this. Yeah, they up, literally you went, can't tell me otherwise. They literally went to the championship with, and I say this all the time. Like I don't think they had a first line. I think they had four second lines though. Yep. Um, no, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. So I mean, we'll get to them later, obviously, but I think uh, depth is important. So they did that. They did resign Riley Shahan. Uh, to a one-year contract. Uh, they also signed Brian Rust uh, to a new four-year deal with a 3.5 AAV. And then, the, the again, the signing um, that had some criticism, Jack Johnson uh, signed for five years, $3.25 million a year. Um, you know, 11 points uh, last year. I just, I don't know. I I have this wrong because yeah I was gonna say seventy seven I like <laughs> yeah as I'm reading that so eleven points in seventy seven games last year was a minus six uh a lot of people know Jack Johnson for the uh, he actually filed for bankruptcy because if I remember correctly his uh, parents took all his money for him oh yeah this was him yeah like, it's um very sad yeah. situation there man but uh. Yeah. He gets a nice, you know, nice contract with them. Five years, like I said, three point two five mil a season, and uh, always key for teams. Uh, and Penguins no different with the 
the power play they put out there. Uh, Penguins had the best player, power play in the league last year at 26.2%. And do I see that changing? Not really. When you have Crosby, Malkin, Latang, uh, Jake Gensel in there, you know, that's – that's a recipe for success. Uh, power play is very important, obviously, in the league special teams. Um, I see them having, uh, a, you know, a good power play again, and you know, a, it's it's very important. So, uh, a nice stat there for the Penguins uh, as we move on to their cross state rival, the Philadelphia Flyers, who I will hand over to Bobby. Just a little. Uh, organization here. They went 42, 26, and 14 last year for 98 points, third in the Metro, and they were eliminated by those said Penguins in the first round. And Bobby, I will, I will hand it over to you. <sighs> talk about your Flyers. Oh my God! All right, so let's start with the biggest story of the Philadelphia Flyers, and that's <laughs> our new mascot, Gritty. Mm. Holy, what a nightmare! All right, so we already talked about him on the podcast a little bit, um, but. <laughs> This has turned out to be a great idea. What I mean, can he say? Yeah. I mean, the dude is on Jimmy Fallon and Colbert, like on the late night shows, and uh, he's busy doing a world tour right now, and people are just loving it. He's a walking meme, and I, 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 yeah. I, I freaking love it. But you know, I'm sure he'll uh, add some extra excitement to the Fargo this year. Um, on the on the real side, though, uh, Jesus, we have James Van Reeves died back. What in the hell? You see, this is something I really didn't see, but kind of should have. Um, if you remember, I called this, by the way. You, you did call this. Tyler did call this. I, I, I was just, I'm, after kind of reading about it, after signing, it's like, yeah, it, it was kind of destiny for him to kind of come back here and, 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 and work with the current, uh, you know, the, the, the state of the Flyers right now, which is young and very talented, fast skating. You know, JVR is a big piece now, right? So this means so he's now on the second line of the power play, which was what he was really notable for. Is going to be how he's going to hit the power play. Um, what is? I think he's with uh, uh, TK and uh, Nolan Patrick on the on the power play. Which, so, oh my God! From with his time with the Leafs, he's one. Uh, excuse me, going to be one of those guys that sits in front of the net and bangs yeah. him home. Not pretty, but. Yeah, he he'll be a, a great addition. By the way, just an update on Gritty. Uh, how he was announced? What less than a week ago? Yeah, he just hit a hundred k followers on Twitter an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, I so. just I wanted to mention that. Sorry, go ahead. Again, again, walking meme. Took him forever to get the check mark too. By the way, I gotta say. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So and listen, I like I'm I'm all for pretty goals, right? I mean, I'm I spend a lot of my time watching compilations on YouTube all the time. But here's the thing. Um, I, I, when I had somewhat of a hockey career, right, I was, you know, I was in the skill of JVR, but I was the guy standing in front of the net always. I, I wasn't the dangler or whatever. I just wanted to bang them home. I don't care what you do as long as the goal goes in, right? I mean, yep. that, that, that's just how it is to me. That's just my mindset, right? Um, and you already know that Nolan Patrick and TK are going to shoot no matter what. Like, they're going to put it on net, and they're going to hit the net. So if JVR can, you know, put up a good screen or get a deflection or get a rebound, whatever, right, I mean, then we're going to be looking at a really good uh, power play for Philadelphia this year. And that's the second line. Like, it, yeah. it, 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 you know, we got some depth now. Um, but and this is what gets me excited now because now we have we have some pretty ridiculous offensive line uh, line pairings. Um, and this is all projection, by the way. This isn't nothing's final because we're still we're still not even the regular season yet. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be on Wednesday. But uh, you look at the top line being Drew on the wing still, which they moved into the wing last year, um, and it, it honestly has helped him a lot. Um, I like well, him on the wing. I was gonna say he was tied for the lead and assist last year with right. and, Wheeler. <laughs> and how he wasn't in the talk for any trophies was just absurd. I feel like yeah, he was yeah. so snubbed, man. I I try not to be biased, but seriously, how <laughs> do you how do you look at him and go, he's not in the talks? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So um and you have Coot, uh, uh Coots, Sean Couturier right in the center, coming off a career season. Dear Christ, I think he broke his season record halfway through the season. Yeah. I think it's what ended up happening. I mean, I, he was I, I one of the, 
he was one of their prospects that for a while they were like, all right, when's this guy? When's this guy gonna be the guy where you think he's gonna be? Yeah, I was always the believer. Uh, I mean, he's been, how long has he been in the system now? For he's been in the system for a few years. So I mean, yeah. I dude, I'm I I've always been about him. I mean, he I love him to death. He's he's mm-hmm. my favorite right now. Um, and then you got uh, connect me right uh, riding out the right wing, which is my sister's favorite player. But uh, he's dude. I what what can he say? He He's he's an offensive player, right? He's a very good shooter. He's a very he's an offensive force, but he also doesn't take shit from anybody, and that's oh, probably yeah. my favorite thing about him. Like he's he will step up to a guy like Sadino Chara if he has to. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he, he he's not gonna back down. Like it he's 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 a true flyer at heart. I feel like <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, and then I want to move on to the second line, which is uh, JVR on the left wing, Patrick uh, uh, taking on center, Voracek running out the right wing. Um, Again, that's a solid line, right? I mean, JVR is going to do the same thing he does in the power play, right? He's the kind of two-way forward that's going to make the plays happen no matter what. And Patrick's always going to put him on the net, right? And 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 Voracek's again, he's kind of like he's he's kind of like another JVR. He's another two-way, uh, kind of bigger body to get up there and get in front of the net. So as long as they, you know, you know, they have a good cycle game going on in the offensive zone, that'll be a deadly second line. I mean, there's no, I don't think there's any doubt on that one. Crazy to see Voracek on the second line. <laughs> it is, it is, and again, this is still just projection, and but it does make sense. It, that, yeah, that line sure. does make sense. Um, look at the third line. You're looking at uh, Oscar Lindblom, which okay, he you know still up, up up and coming here, but I like him a lot. I, I think he definitely belongs on the third line. Uh, you got Jordan Wheel in the middle, uh, and Wayne Simmons on the third line, which it's it's weird to see Simmers on the on on the third line, but again does kind of make sense with some of the more depth that we're kind of, especially with JVR signing. Uh, still love Simmers. Um, there's a lot of trade talk around him. Yeah, I was going to just about to say that. <laughs> I mean, there, there's always going to be. That's going to be the problem this season, and it might hurt him a little bit morale-wise. Um, I don't want to see him go. I mean, listen, if the deal's right, the deal's right. But I, he, he's another one of those guys, like I was saying, TK earlier. He's definitely a true flyer, right? I mean, total grinder, going to make the plays happen. He can shoot. He can pass. He can hit. He can fight. Like, you know, what's not to love about this guy? And he, he's just awesome. He's an awesome guy. And he yeah. got the bottom fourth line, which is Michael Raffle, uh, Lawton, maybe, probably not, though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> after uh, that whole ordeal, he's in some legal trouble right now. Not really any new updates since we last talked about on the podcast. But, uh, yeah. Terra fly- just, just, t- <laughs> I seen yeah. somebody, I just wanted to say, somebody said, uh, like, what line is he on? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's gonna be a uh, it's well, gonna be on the prison line, surely. No, I was gonna say what line might be what coke line. Yeah, uh, it, it it should it will probably be law and since Terra is now on some issues. Um, so it'll probably be Scott Law and then uh, Dale Weiss. Um, not really much to say on that fourth line. Um, I've always liked Raffle. Um, yeah, but he's definitely a fourth line guy, so not surprising. But those 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 top three lines are definitely worth talking. I mean, they're 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 good. They're they're deep. Which is what I'm I'm really liking, and then defense, which is probably where we've been shining for the past couple of years. Uh, so we got you know uh, again projection. So we're looking at uh, Provorov, who he does not get the love that he should be getting. Like I mean, I don't know how you don't like this kid. I mean he 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 puts him in the net constantly and consistently making plays. Like it, it's he's it's uncanny. He has some hockey IQ that you just don't see. All the time, you know what I mean? Like it, it's, yeah. it's just he's one of those players. And I love him, uh, and he'll be paired with Andrew McDonald, which <laughs> somebody right. who you don't love. <laughs> I listen. He's been around a while, and you know he has the A and everything. And I, I just, I, I could have thought we could have done something with him deal wise uh, back then because it, it's interesting. There's a huge contrast. Just a few years ago, he was on the waiver wire. And now he's, you know, a top defenseman. Numbers yeah. don't say so. I mean, yeah, there exactly. there are just some stupid plays that I've seen him make uh, on the ice that I just can't fathom. Like not even just points wise, like just you know, miss pucks, uh, turnovers, especially turnovers. That was a big thing, but that's just a Flyers thing. Um, I, I just I don't know. I at the end of the day, he's a leader for the team, right? I mean, it, it, that's what it is. He's a locker room leader. And if that if that's really what's going to be good for a lot of the young guys that are here, fine. But yeah, I it could have done better. 
Uh, second line, you're looking at uh, Robert Hag and uh, uh, Shane Goss Fair. Dude, I could rave about these two guys all day. I mean, and I here's the thing: I wanted Bravarov and Ghost just because I, I those two played together like the power play and stuff. And I, dude, I, I think they're just deadly. But I guess the way you're looking at it, right, is you need a, uh, you need a kind of bigger guy, uh, kind of with with some of the shooters, right? Like Shane Gasper is not a big dude. Hag is, so, you know, they're gonna be they're gonna be a good matchup. I mean, they're still gonna be good. They're still gonna rip them. Uh, excited for that line, and then. Uh, third line you're running out. You got uh, Sandheim and Reiko Gudas. Gudas, another guy. It's like, man, I don't even know how he got that extension <laughs> yeah. when he got it. Uh, see, he, he might be on. Is he on his last year? He might be on his uh, last I, year. Or I, two. I, I mean, like, look, he's been. I think he's been a solid. Uh, he's, I think he's been solid though. He's been solid. I just, again, with you know, this was still like he he got the extension when guys like Hag and Prov and Sandheim were down in the minors. And just mm-hmm. doing it, doing the good down there. And it's like, really, we're not bringing them up for, yeah. for him, you know? It, it's just one of those things. But yeah, I, I, I don't hate the guy. I just he, he, I, I want to see him put up some more numbers. That's that's and, really all. And on Ratko Gudas, he has uh, two more years left on his contract. So two this more year years. next. Okay. Okay. So yeah. All right. That's fine. And then all right. So this is where. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where this gets interesting. It wouldn't be the Flyers. If you didn't talk about goaltending, yeah, I mean, so all right, let's let's look at this for a second. So you still have Brian Elliott and Michael Neuvirth as the top two goalies that are probably going to be in. However, Neuvirth is apparently hurt again. I don't think we ever found out what it was. So he, I don't know what it was. It was it's been an undisclosed injury since it was announced. This was like a week or two ago. I, I really don't. He can't stay healthy, man. Like there's yeah. a picture I I can't remember I might have retweeted it so go to my my Twitter at Robert underscore Marson if you wanted to go see but it was like he that's his whole career and there's that infamous game last uh, was it last year or a game before or year before where he fainted on the ice yeah like, I mean it just I I love him I love my he's such a solid goaltender but he cannot stay healthy he got hurt last season which is why we had to emergency sign Peter Mrazek which turned out to be a terrible experiment but <laughs> like it man I it sucks and then also Alf Lyon who would probably be taking his place uh if he would be needed to miss some time he's hurt too he's I, I he might be back but he's still hurt no, I, I the latest I see online was he's is like a four to six six week injury. Is he? I I thought that's what I seen. Let me look though. I I you see I I forget things so quickly. Um, yeah. Um, uh, this is my mind. This is the problem with me. Like, look. Uh, I have to look. Um, I'm still looking, but going off, but still talking about that. Elliot's just coming off it. Yep, it is four weeks. All right. Yep. Yep. Mm. Yep. yep. Okay, that's right. That was the big thing, and this was a few days. This was like two weeks ago. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. I forget things really quickly. That, that's just <laughs> nature, nature of the beast when you're doing these kind of things. Um, yeah. Yes, Alex Lyons hurt her for four to six weeks, so he's going to be no good. So it would be Anthony Stolarz. He was also he was also dealing with I think a little bit of an injury, but he's fine. He's fine. So it'll probably be Brian Elliott who is coming off an injury, and it'll be uh, Elliott and Stolarz most likely uh, coming Thursday. However, however, <laughs> and this is what I'm going to get to. Carter Hart. I mean, you don't talk about the Flyers without talking about Carter Hart right now. He's he's I, I would. He's the best. He's, he's the best goalie prospect in the NHL right now. Yes. And for good reason. I mean, um, I don't have them pulled up immediately, even though I definitely should have. But. Go look at his stats for the, the past couple of seasons as a silver tip. He won goaltender of the year again in the WHL. And if you get to watch him in the World Juniors in the past two years, please do. Like, if yeah. you ever go to I, I, dude, there's, there's, and even in the preseason games, he, so they, they talk a lot about him, right? So he, first of all, the big thing, like, he has no social media. And he's been working with this. The big thing that I always found interesting with him is that he has this sports psychologist that he's been working with since, like, he was a teenager. Mm. And apparently that's helped him, like, remain calm in situations. And you can see it. Like, the thing with Hart is he's not that flashy. He's not a flashy make save goaltender. He just knows where the puck's going to be every time. 
Yep, always he's in always, position. He's always in front of the puck. It is so rare for him to be out of position. And that is completely fine. I I would rather you do that. I mean, yeah, I'm sure he'll glove somebody here and there, but I don't care what you do. Just prevent the puck from getting out of that. And Carter Hart's been doing that. I mean, we, me and Tyler went to the uh, Flyers uh, developmental camp over the summer, and we got to see him. And we, we got to see firsthand just how true everything that's been being said about him truly is. I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter what game, even if it's a practice session, he's always in front of the, in front of the puck. It just doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. So with all these injuries and with all these question marks around the goalies and, and most likely with Carter Hart playing for the Phantoms, I don't think that's any question anymore that he's going to, to, the, to Lehigh Valley. Uh, it, it is very possible you will see Carter Hart in some NHL regular season action this year. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that happens. If that means all four goalies go down <laughs> with injuries, because it's very possible. Um, goaltending for the Flyers has not been anywhere near stellar for, I would probably say, a better part of a decade. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it, you know, I mean, you've had some na- big names, right? You, you had you had Briz in for a little bit. I mean, he was great, but... You know, uh, you had Bobrovsky, you had Robert Ash, Nitty Oh my God, I forgot they had Bobrovsky. How the fuck did they let him yeah. go? <laughs> yeah, I don't. That one, I don't. That one, I really just don't get. I mean, he would have definitely been good. Uh, you know, it, it, they just, especially with this D line that we have now. Like, I mean, yeah, we the goals against would be so down. It'd be ridiculous. I mean, it whatever. I, you know, so it, it's hard to it's hard to not be excited for somebody like Carter Hart, someone who's been putting up the numbers and uh and it's just he's just all around great but i, I will agree with hextall as much as i do want to see him in a flyers jersey playing develop development's important right yeah it, it's, especially it's a, with a goalie it's a big transition to go from the whl to the nhl so playing for lehigh valley and just waiting for the call when he is ready is good for him uh and other than that, man, I mean, the, the, the other prospects that could be in and out of the Flyers lineup this year, like looking, I have a list of them, just Morgan Frost. Uh, I would say right about the top. Me and, Ty, me and Tyler were raving about him when we were at the, the training camp. Yeah, I, mean, he's I, thought good, he, dude. I thought he was the best skater there by mm-hmm. far um, <clears throat> over everybody else. Yeah, and then you're looking at, you know, I, 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 I've – Kind of surprised, but not surprised at the same time that he didn't make the lineup. But you know, I again looking at the the depth that we have right now. I, exactly. I, yeah. You know, it's he's just waiting for an injury. That's all. Yeah. And then you know, you got Philip Myers, who's been talked about a lot. Uh, you got Samuel Morin, uh, Vorobiev, uh, Rupsov, Ratcliffe, and uh, Faraby, uh, O'Brien, Faraby, and O'Brien. The two picks from this past draft. Uh, and then uh, uh, Bukovel. Uh, who's 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 weirdly just got more buzz this time around. It's really strange. I mean, he played in, in some preseason and looked good. We have a deep prospect pool. So yeah, two sure. things happen here. Either all these guys are are the you're gonna be called up at like one time and just reshape this team years from now, or we're gonna start making deals. Yeah. These guys are worth a lot. So this is going to get interesting with the Flyers. And I I, I will I don't have them winning the Eastern Conference, but to say that they don't have a shot this year is, I think, under <sighs> underrating these guys. Yeah, I, I mean, I, if they had a goalie, uh, a top, a top twelve goalie, uh, I think they make. I think they make a run. I mean, look, I, I think the Flyers uh, have amazing depth, as we've talked about. Having Simmons on the fourth line, like, are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Um, I like the defense. I like you know, and the, and the thing I really like about and, and again projected lines, however, uh, probable lines, and uh, you know they split guys up, right? You know, Voracek does he deserve to be on the fourth line? Absolutely, or the first line? Sorry, absolutely. However, you know. A, a line with TK and Patrick, is that a great idea? They're both young guys. Um, you know, you got to split it up. Also on defense, like, you know, you have to have, uh, you kind of have to shelter Sandheim. Um, you mm. know, you don't want to put him with Hag, two young guys. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I know I really like their depth. 
it just again the the thing that happens every year with them is the goaltending. Uh, yeah. So we'll have to we'll have to see. But uh, it's the biggest question mark, but also the most exciting thing in Flyers hockey right now. It's, it's yeah. we are in such a strange spot, but I am super excited mm-hmm. for this season. I'm gonna you know I'm actually gonna try to try and hit a game while I'm home if they're at home uh, over the weekend. I don't think they are, but if they are, I might try and catch one. We'll see. Yeah. I don't think they are looking at it, but that would be that would be fun. But I, man. I, I'm I'm excited. It's hard to say. And then also another, just one more bullet point is that they're they're uh, going to be in Philadelphia for the Stadium Series against Pittsburgh Penguins at Citizens Bank Park, um, in January, February. I believe. Is it February? I think it was February 23rd. I might. Uh, be <laughs> I'm looking, but uh, yes. So that's what I'm trying to go. Uh, yeah. it's February 23rd. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not at the bank. I am sorry. Jesus. It's I the, the link. Blank, the link. Huh? Yeah. yeah. The link. Link of Financial Field. Right. But, I I'm trying to go. <laughs> yeah, uh, it'd be fun. Time. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see if that actually happens or not because I'm sure tickets are not gonna be the cheapest of things in the world. But um, definitely trying to go. Um, I think it'd be a fun thing. Nice to see some outside hockey at Philadelphia. But I know we spent way too much time on the Flyers. But of course, no, they're my fine. team. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I was gonna just say, so. you know, the Sharks and the Flyers will probably be talked about just because we know a lot the most about them. So there you go. Yep. Uh, moving on to the Blue Jackets, uh, finished just behind the Flyers last year, 98 points, fourth in the Metro. And uh, after going up 2-0 on the Capitals uh, and making them scramble, they ended up losing the series 4-2. Uh, so uh, they they come in this year with a lot of questions because uh, you have uh, Artemi Panarin, um, who's a UFA July 1st, and you have Bobrovsky, who is a UFA July 1st, two of their you know, best players. Uh, Bobrovsky has been uh, one of the best goalies in the league for the past couple of years. You got Panarin uh, coming over from the uh, still head scratching trade from Chicago uh, a few seasons ago. And there's a lot of rumors as, as I can talk as a Sharks fan, Panarin uh, before we got Carlson was one of the guys that uh, was rumored. Um, you know, he said that he wasn't going to come to camp and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, I think, um, it's going to be interesting. Bobrovsky, I think more than likely stays Panarin though. I think, I think he goes, I've, I heard he wants to go back to Chicago of all places for some reason. Um, you know, maybe, maybe like it's chemistry or it stays in Kane. Uh, but, um, yeah, those, you know, if you're talking about their big storylines, uh, not on the, uh, you know, on off the ice, I should say, those are the two big stories. Uh, also, uh, re-signed Wedenberg, Dubinsky, and signed Nash in the off season, uh, you know, for uh, some center depth. And you know, the one, the the goalie prospect that they have uh, in in Columbus uh, could be a replacement for Bobrovsky. You got Corpusalo there, who's their backup. Uh, he's been their backup for, uh, I think, two seasons now, and uh, always, um, again, one of those uh, goalie prospects. And so, as a, as a goalie myself, it's nice to hear about the goalie prospects, and uh, he's looked good um, and could be a p- potential replacement for Bobrovsky. So, uh, the outlook on the Blue Jackets, uh, obviously, the on ice uh, results are obviously what matters the most. However, there's a lot of off ice stuff to be figured out. Uh, and mm. wants to see how that goes. I mean, if Corpus Allo just puts up numbers because I'm, you know, he'll get some starts, right? I mean, he's gonna get some starts. Yeah. So he, you know, he starts putting up the numbers, then I, I, I got to say that Bobrovsky gets traded before the deadline. I mean, I don't see. Yeah. Because at that point, he's an asset. It's always tricky, right? Because you, depending on where they are, uh, you never, you know, you, you don't want to lose a guy for nothing, but you also don't want to just like salvage your like just like throw away your season because you traded a guy uh Panarin uh, I remember in that Washington series uh I think it was it was either, it was obviously either game one or two I'm pretty sure it was game one though uh the ridiculous overtime uh goal that he had uh I always liked him um <clears throat> but Bobrovsky, like I said, I think he's a he's a must sign um a must uh, you know I, I again they have Corpus Allo, but you're, we're talking about Sergei Bobrovsky here, who just you know recently won the Vesna Trophy uh, a couple of seasons ago. So 
Again, uh, we'll have to watch with the Blue Jackets. Also, uh, I forgot to add this in our notes, but I just remembered it, thankfully. Uh, Seth Jones uh, is out four to six weeks uh, to start the season. That broke, I believe, yesterday as a recording. Uh, so Seth Jones out, um, one of the better defensemen in the league. Let's, you know, we'll just have to see how that affects them. But, you know, for the start of the season, but should be back. Uh, like I said, in four to six weeks. Uh, next team we have on the list here, the New Jersey Devils. Uh, surprise team last year. Um, pleasantly surprised. Uh, you know, uh, the Devils being in Jersey. Not that I like them, but it's nice to see them succeed. Uh, 97 points last year, 44, 29, and 9. Fifth in the Metro, and they were eliminated in the first round by Tampa, who uh, was just a – I know it was the powerhouse there and we're expected to win that series. Uh, the big news for them, um, at least to start the season, Corey Schneider uh, had off season surgery to uh, repair torn cartilage in his left hip. Um, and is like, he's looking more doubtful um, than anything to, to open the season. Um, they had Keith Kincaid last year splitting time with Corey Schneider, which is crazy because uh, Corey Schneider did not have a good year last year. Uh, however, um, you know, it's just it, the Corey Schneider is, uh, I think, one of the more underrated goalies in the league. Uh, so I think uh, he is key to their success. But Keith Kincaid did a good job uh, last year uh, coming in, you know, they got into the playoffs again, a team that, uh, I'm not, I, uh, you know, I, I don't think they were necessarily going to be a bad team last year, but I don't think a lot of people had them in the playoffs. They over, uh, achieved and, you know, they made it in the playoffs. And a lot of that was because of Taylor Hall, who won the MVP last year, uh, crazy season for him, 93 points, 39 goals, 54 assists. And, uh, you know, <laughs> the, uh, I, I still to this day can't believe the trade happened uh, with, uh, you know, the Oilers traded Hall to the to the New Jersey Devils for Adam Larson. Uh, the, the big thing is, uh, you know, in 148 games with the Devils, he has 146 points. He's their best player. He is a superstar in this league. And he carried them, them last year. He had 41 more points than the next leading scorer on the team, which is crazy. And that's the, that's really the reason he won the the, the MVP. Because, um, you know, that was a big debate last year because the, the award is the best, the most valuable player to their team. And, you know, he carried them to the playoffs. Uh, again, like I said, 41 more points. Insane. Uh, over the next leading score, uh, so well deserved, and uh, got him on my fantasy team uh, yep. this year. So happy about there that. Go. There you go. <laughs> I mean, I you know, I, I see. I got the Devils just being a solid contender this time. As long as Cordy Schneider is able to make it back at some point, I mean, he's been solid. Like I said, they overachieved last year. A lot of their young guys stepped up. Uh, Nico Hishier had a good year last year. Uh, Jesper Bratt kind of came out of nowhere. So I think. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if that if that stays because uh, if it does, I mean, I think you know, I, I still think they're a long way off talking about being a contender, but they have a bright future. Um, and again, when you have Taylor Hall on your team, uh, I, again, I just it baffles me that that trade was made one for one, um, mm-hmm. and and now it's kind of showing. Uh, and we will move on to the Carolina Hurricanes, uh, a team that I always pick as a darling, and it uh, never works. Uh, just uh, <laughs> over 500 last year, 36, 35, and 11, if you don't count the overtime losses, that is. <laughs> uh, 83 <laughs> points, six in the Metro, missed the playoffs last year. Uh, the big news for them this offseason is the trade, the big trade with the uh, Calgary Flames is they acquired Dougie Hamilton, Michael Furlan, Adam Fox, uh, excuse me, and Adam Fox from Calgary uh, for Elias Lindholm and Noah Hannafin. Uh, Ham- Hamilton had 44 points last year in 82 games. Uh, one of the, uh, you know, he he's bounced around a little bit for being one of the better defensemen in the league, in my opinion. Uh, started his career with Boston. Uh, and, and it's kind of bounces uh, around from there. But 
Um, this is also uh, this trade was also partially because of contracts uh, disputes. Uh, Noah Hannafin and Elias Lindholm um, were not really content about signing there. They they send them over to Calgary, um, and, and we'll kind of see what happens there. I, I'm a big fan of Dougie Hamilton. I think he's an upgrade on on Noah Hannafin. Geez, this is a tongue twister here. Uh, <laughs> Hamilton and Hannafin. Um, but yeah, uh, that was their big trade of the summer. Uh, they also uh, uh, got defenseman Calvin DeHaan in free agency from the Islanders. Uh, four-year contract with a 4.45 AAV. And... Uh, they well, I see. You know, when I say that's the big deal of the summer. The maybe the big deal of the summer is who they lost is because they they dealt uh, Jeff Skinner, who's been there, it feels like forever, but he's still young. Uh, they dealt Skinner to the Sabers in exchange for uh, forward prospect Cliff Pooh and a Buffalo second round pick in 2019, and their third and sixth in 2020. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know. There's not much to say that I really like the Carolina's defense, uh, but the uh, losing Skinner is definitely going to hurt them up front. Uh, also, Elias Lindholm losing him up front is going to is going to be uh, interesting. So, yep. um, yeah, and then I'm sure this this is so close to your heart. Uh, Peter Morazic signs with them so one year contract. <laughs> so close, <laughs> uh, and Cam Ward who. Um, Jeez, back when he was in his prime, was uh, one of the best goalies in the league. He moves on. Uh, we will get to him later. Um, and also a lot of uh, a lot of change in in Carolina with their front office and their coaching. Uh, Rod Brindamore steps in as a new co- coach as Bill Peters goes to Calgary. And then you had last year with uh, you know they had the they had the new owner. Um, I can't think. Uh, the, his first name is escaping me right now, but Dundon. And then you had uh, Francis stepping down. So a lot of change there, uh, trying to figure it out. Uh, the one guy that they selected, uh, they moved all the way up in this in this year's draft to the second overall pick and, and selected Andre Svechnikov. Uh, his brother is also a prospect with the Red Wings. Uh, in, he had 72 points uh, in 44 games with the Barry Coles last year in the OHL. Uh, he's a he's a sniper. He's a nice winger. Um, so I don't know if he will be uh, in the lineup this year. That is, uh, you know, we'll have to see about that. Uh, but ultimately, uh, in the NHL, it all comes back to goaltending. And Scott Darling was not good enough last year. Uh, honestly, he was flat out awful. I don't know how he kept his, somewhat of a job. Uh, he had played 43 games last year. Uh, and I can't even, I can't believe this. Three point one eight goals against average, and a point eight 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 save percentage. And he started forty three games. That's insane. Mm. Uh, Cam Ward was not much better. Um, whew, yeah, that's got to change. Uh, if if the Hurricanes are going to be my darling again, darling has to be better. So uh, <laughs> we will move on uh, to the New York Islanders. Um, they, the big news there obviously is not what they added, but what they lost. Uh, John Tavares gone. Uh, I just talked about Calvin DeHaan. He is gone. Um, how do you see that this playing out for the Islanders this year? I mean, they lost the face of their franchise. You see Matt Barzell. Uh, he had, he had a really good rookie season. He won the Calder. Um, it just. You know, it's funny because actually Matt Borzell had 85 points last year and Tavares had 84, so just beat him out. But, I mean, we're talking about we're talking about JT here. Um, how do you see their season going, losing a superstar like that? What season? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's not good. I, dude, I have no hope for this team. I mean, you know, I, I just, I don't. I Yeah. I get they, they really couldn't. JT didn't really want to stay. I well, I shouldn't say that. He had interest, but the truth be told, the only reason he's on the Leafs is because he wanted to go home. That yeah. was it. That's the that's the biggest reason, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, you lost JT, and then you lost Calvin DeHaan. 
I don't. Mm. The only thing, the only thing they have going for him is Barry Trotz. Like uh, seriously, yeah. like that, yeah. that that's really it to me. I mean, so so they bring in Lou Amarello as uh, president of hockey operations. Um, they got rid of uh, Garth Snow, uh, and then I don't know if if that was a a plea to try to get uh, Tavares to stay. They bring Trotz in. This is all before uh, Tavares uh, makes his decision. Ultimately, it was not enough. He leaves, and uh, and it's going to be rough. And then the guys they brought in, I don't really get this. Uh, so they bring in Leo Komarov from the Leafs, uh, Bell, Terry Filpula from the Flyers, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew you're something to say about that. And Tom Kunakel, um from the uh, from the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, as much as goal scoring with John Tavares is is important, you know, you got to keep the puck out of the net and the the Islanders could not do that to save their lives last year. Uh, they had the worst goals against uh, against per game in the league last year. Um, and, they, you know, they had the seventh best goals per game in the league. They just couldn't keep a puck out of their net. Also, they had the worst penalty kill in the league, sitting at 73.2%. Not good enough. Um, they have a new goalie this year in Robin Lanner coming over from the Buffalo Sabres. Excuse me. Um, he got a one-year deal at $1.5 million. Uh, kind of, uh, you know, let's see what you can do, kind of deal, um, and, and see if they can, you know, keep some pucks out of the net. Uh, is is what needs to happen? Cause, uh, yeah, that that's <laughs> that's a problem if you can't. Um, anyway, uh, the one guy I'm looking for uh, forward to watching this year is Matt Barzell. I mentioned him earlier. Uh, also picked him on my fantasy hockey team this year. Uh, he, he lit it up last year, 85 points. Um, and like I said, won the Calder. Uh, he, he looks good. Um, he, he looks like it, he could be the next, uh, you know, the next star in this league. So yeah, I think, uh, that's their bright spot <laughs> uh, for them this year. Um, and we'll kind of see, see how things go uh, with a life after John Tavares. Um, we will move on to the other New York team. The New York Rangers uh, had a rebuilding year last year. Uh, they literally put out a statement to their fans and said, yeah, we're going to suck for the rest of this year. We're getting rid of players. Uh, they got rid of McDonough. They got rid of JT Miller um, in that trade with Tampa. Um, they had 77 points last year. Um, they... Uh, Yes, <laughs> they had uh, 34, uh, 34 wins, 39 uh, losses, and nine uh, overtime losses last year, and they missed the playoffs. Uh, they also had a change behind the bench as uh, Dave, David Quinn? I think David Quinn, yeah. Think so. Think so. <laughs> uh, replaces uh, Elaine Vigneault. Uh, we are was... so good at this. No, you know what, though? In our defense, like, I've literally... Uh, my brain. Okay, I mean, first of all, I haven't slept. My brain is fried. But we've been looking at so much stuff this week that <laughs> I can't. Uh, he was the uh, Boston University coach for the past five seasons. <clears throat> the uh, I guess I don't know if you want to call it the big move for them, but uh, in the trade with uh, to the Tampa with uh, McDonough, they got Vlad Nemestikov back. He signs a two-year deal worth eight million dollars for per season, and. Uh, I guess the big question with them is Henrik Lundqvist is now 36 years old. Uh, how much left? How much does he have left in the tank? Uh, had, he had a 9-15 uh, save percentage last year uh, with a 2.98 goals against average in 63 games. Uh, he has that ridiculous contract, which is paying him, I want to say, eight and a half a year. Um, you know. He's been the face of that franchise uh, for a long time, but he's getting up there, and the team around him is not getting any better. So uh, he might be peppered this year. Um, he's going to get a lot of shots. Oh yeah, for sure, for I sure. Mean, he's 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 going to get the shots on him. So um, you might be looking at his last season. You, you really don't know. I mean, cause... yeah, you never know. Because like you know, he. I, I think he wants to stay in New York. Like, I don't think he wants to go anywhere else, but I also don't think he wants to deal with, like, bullshit losing seasons either. So you never right. know. I mean, uh, listen, he's been a very, very, very loyal goaltender. Yeah. So I don't see him going anywhere. It's Rangers or bust. So if he if he doesn't 
if he feels like he can deal with it much longer, okay, then we might see him around for a little bit longer. He might be basically the the goaltender version of Yammer Yager, but <laughs> you know, uh, you're you're right. The Rangers have been deteriorating. There's really nothing helping him out. So we're just gonna see. He's gonna face a lot of shots. That's all I can say about it. Yeah, and uh, like I said. I- you know, he's getting peppered out there. Last year, they had the fourth worst goals against uh, per game um, at 3.21 goals a game. Not good enough. And, you know, they were ranked 22nd in goals for. So that's a, re- a recipe for a very bad season. Uh, and then the interesting thing with them is, you know, they again, they put out last year to their fans. Hey, we're going to suck uh, for the rest of this year. And uh, it'll be interesting to see who they move at the deadline. The one player that uh, is definitely being rumored is Matt Zuccarello. Uh, he's on the last year of his deal, along with Kevin Hayes and Pavel, Pavel Buchnevich, which is one of their young guys. I think they'll resign him, but it'll be interesting to see which direction they go because, uh, you know, New York is a is a hot spot. Like p- players want to play there. However, they don't really have the cap space to do it if they sign these players. Like. They, they, they. It's going to be interesting to see where they put their money. Um, if they decide to keep Zuccarello, you know, you're le- looking at less money. But um, again, you never know. Uh, as much as I hate to say this, Eric Carlson, uh, you don't know if he's going to resign. And and again, uh, a free agent like that might be uh, intrigued by the fact of playing in New York. Um, so we will see, but that will round out the Metro division. Um, I, it's it's a weird division. I think there's a lot of teams. I, I think it's just for a lot of hockey at this point. But there's a lot of a lot of teams that are very similar. I could say going a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Um, but we will move on to the Atlantic division with a uh, definite contender. Uh, the Tampa Bay lightning had 113 points last year. Uh, they were first in the Atlantic division, uh, as you know, cause we're going in order. <laughs> and, uh, they were eliminated, eliminated in the uh, conference final to the eventual, eventual Washington. Uh, oh my God. Send help. Uh, Stanley Cup champion, <laughs> Washington capitals. Uh, their big move this year was getting Nikita Kucherov locked up, uh, eight-year deal, seventy-six million dollars, uh, and that AAV, if you're looking at it, is nine point five a year. Uh, had a hundred points last year uh, in eighty games, uh, thirty-nine goals, sixty-one assists, and he finished sixth in Hart voting, which I thought was kind of messed up. Like I thought he could have been up there more. I mean, at the end of the day, he didn't win it, so it doesn't really matter. God, I, I love him though. I love him. <laughs> I, I yeah. said this before. Lightning's a team that I have a soft spot for, for whatever reason. I really can't explain why. And he, he's definitely part of it, though. All I know is that he's, he's, yeah. he's such a good player to watch. And another really good player to watch is uh, Victor Hedman. Came up. Yeah. He won the Norris last year. Uh, he is always in that. He's always in the Vesna. Uh, Vesna. Oh my God, Norris. <laughs> uh, um, conversation. Um, what trophy tie? The the Sonoris. That's what uh, you, you defense still stumbled. Oh my god! I, I know. You sure? Yeah. Uh, right. And then you know maybe it's because this is on my mind. Andre Vasilevsky. Uh, he, he's he's probably going to be a Vesna candidate again. Nine two zero save percentage last year. Two point six two goals against, uh, and he finished third in Vesna voting. Um, you know he. <laughs> As crazy as this sounds, right? And this is going to probably be a hot take. Is However, it going to be a hot take? Is it piping? I don't, I don't know if it's going to be a piping hot take because I'm not. All right. <laughs> I'm not really saying he's bad or anything. I'm just saying he. I'm not sold on him just because he's a product of. He has a very good team in front of him, and I get it. He's a very good goaltender. There's just something about him that I just don't know. I think I probably am crazy about that, but there's just there's something there that I just I'm not I'm not sure about. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we'll we'll kind of move on from that hot take. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got Nikita Kucherov and Stamkos leading the lineup there, and 
<laughs> and they finished first in goals for last year, 3.54 goals a game. Pretty ridiculous. Uh, and then I guess the big uh, off-ice move um, is that CVY steps down. Uh, Julian Breesbro, I for always I don't know how to say his name. I'm not even going to try. Uh, I <laughs> said this in the podcast. Uh, Breesbois, I think it is, uh, takes over there. Look, I mean, Tampa, there's no reason they, they shouldn't win the Atlantic here uh, and be a, a contender uh, for the for the Cup. Uh, they're a deep team. Uh, have the scoring, have the defense, and even though I just said otherwise, or sort of, uh, they got the goaltending to, to definitely win the Cup. So uh, no no reason there. Uh, we move on to the Boston Bruins. Uh, finished one point behind the Lightning last year. Kind of gave them a run for their money at the end of this season for the first spot. Uh, they were eliminated by those Tampa Bay Lightning uh, in the second round, four to one. Uh, and those pesky yeah, Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah, those pesky. Uh, they beat them in five <laughs> games. Uh, the so uh, the Bruins are a very interesting team because they might have the one of the best lines in hockey in Bergeron, Marchand, and Pasternak. Um, you've seen it when they played the Leafs in the first in the first series. They literally lit it up. Uh, in 12 games, uh, 12 playoff games, that is, last year, Pasternak had 20 points, Marchand, and Marchand had 17, um, and Bergeron had 16 in 11 games. Uh, now, the interesting thing with them is their forward depth is not very good, and it just got worse this year. They've lost uh, both Rick and Riley Nash to free agency. Um, so they're one of those teams that has, like, you know, I was talking about earlier, the Flyers kind of split players up and, and and that's why they're all their lines are so good but Bruins are in the other case let's you know what let's throw our, all of our eggs in one basket uh let's put you know one of the best lines in hockey out there and then our second line is okay and then our third and fourth line are just whatever that's kind of their strategy uh having said that uh they do have some guys that uh could be impact players this year Ryan Donato is the guy that I'm looking at uh he could play a key role for them. He had nine points in 12 regular season games last year. Uh, he was one of the players uh, that was uh, over in uh, Pyeongchang for the U.S. Olympic team. Uh, obviously, NHL is not going. College kids went. He was one of them. Um, look good. And, uh, you know, hopefully he pans out. You know, always want those Americans to pan out for sure. Uh, and then I guess the, uh, the interesting thing for me is Zidane Chara is still going. Um, I think he's one of the better defensive defensemen in the league. And I mean, he is huge, so maybe he should be, but he's 41 now. Um, how much does he have left in the tank is really the question. Uh, you know, they have, uh, Tory Krug back there. Uh, Charlie McAvoy, uh, is, is stepping up. So they have other guys there, but, uh, Chara has been the Bruins' number one for as long as I can remember. So um, it'll be, like I said, let's see if he can, let's see if he can keep up. And uh, and yeah, uh, next we will move on to the Maple Leafs, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, they were eliminated in the first round last year by Boston, 105 points. So the uh, the Atlantic teams, the top three, were really competitive, and then after that, it dropped off. Uh, and then you know. The uh, obvious improvement, I'm still a tad salty about, but not as much now we got Eric Carlson. And John Tavares uh, goes over there uh, to his hometown team. You know, you've seen him with the pictures with him and his Leafs fucking comforter, uh, whatever. I mean, Shrugs offered him $3 million, but hometown loyalty is cool, too. Uh, <laughs> nah, I, I I can't blame him. I, I, the Leafs are my second favorite team, I would say. Not that I'm avidly rooting for them, but I would like to see them do good. And uh, 84 points last year in 82 games will add to that already insane offense with Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, William Nylander. Um, now, <sighs> having said about that great offense, is it's their defense that could be a concern. Uh, they don't have a true number one. Uh, Morgan Riley, I think, could contend for that. Uh, at some, I, I really like him. Uh, I think he could contend to be that guy, at, you know, maybe by the end of the season people are talking about, but there's a lot of holes there. Um, 
I, I I always say it, but defense wins championships. So we'll kind of see how things go there. Um, you know, you can score ten goals a game, but if you let up eleven, you're not winning hockey games. So nope. um, it, it'll be interesting there. Uh, and the man stopping the pucks, Frederick Anderson. Uh, again, interesting case. Uh, so he 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 was a workhorse last year, and it kind of backfired, right? So he played 66 total regular season games last year, uh, mm-hmm. which was second in in all um, in all in the ranking. Cam Talbot of the Oilers was the only guy who had more. Um, he had a 9.81 goals against average, a 9.18 save percentage. And five shutouts in 2017-18. Uh, you know, then that's the end of the season. He starts dealing with some injuries. You know, maybe some fatigue. And in the playoffs, in that one series against the Bruins, he had a 3.76 goals against average, uh, and an 8.96 save percentage in the seven-game series. Uh, like I said, I think uh, I, I remember he was dealing with. I, I can't remember. I. It was like a, not a concussion, but like it was an upper body injury, maybe a shoulder, something like that. Uh, I remember from last year, um, an arm, whatever. He was dealing with some stuff, and uh, and yeah, he maybe maybe got overworked a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we talked about Lou Lamorello moving to the Islanders. Uh, his successor, Kyle Dubas, takes over at just the age of thirty-two. Uh, and and his first, you know, one of his first moves was signing John Tavares. So I can't think, I don't think you can fault him uh, <laughs> for what he's done so far. Um, mm. The one thing that maybe you will be able to fault him later for is uh, the contract of William Nylander is something that could hang over them for the whole season. He was expected to sign a deal this summer, um, an extension uh, that would kick in next year as his uh, contract. Uh, entry level contract is up. However, that has not happened, and uh, and we'll see if he ends up getting moved. I I honestly think he stays. They'll get a contract done. It's just working out the financial stuff. They have a lot of young stars there. You got to pay each one of them. So um so yeah, that is it for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Hope they do good this year. They'll um, be exciting. They'll be really exciting to watch. Yeah, they're they're one of the best teams to watch just because of how fast they are and how young they are up front. So I, I enjoyed them last year. Um and and you know adding they have John Tavares. Team. Yeah, adding John Tavares uh Gosh. will definitely help you. So uh I think that offense could be a Stanley Cup contender. It's just again the back end we'll kind of see. Uh, and now we move on to the Atlantic teams that kind of there's a significant drop off here. We got the Florida Panthers who had a late season surge, almost made the playoffs. They finished with 96 points, uh, 44, 30, and eight. Um, the news uh, for the summer for them is uh, they acquired Mike Hoffman uh, from the Sharks uh, 15 minutes after he was dealt to the Sharks from the Ottawa Senators. Uh, and he is, uh, unfortunately, uh, I will say, um, he's known right now for uh, the situation with Eric Carlson, with his uh, longtime girlfriend. Uh, the I I forget. I guess it was like not threats, but like the the bad thing she was saying to it, Melinda Carlson. Dude, it was so ugly. Like what? Yeah. I, I forget everything she said. I don't even <clears throat> want to bring it up. Yeah, I mean, what in the? <sighs> yeah, because. You know, if nobody knows, how? Uh, I, I now I'm. It's coming back to me now, is because Melinda and Eric Carlson had the miscarriage. That's and, right. Oh yeah, my God. Yeah. yeah. It was that ugly. Um, Which, and, by the way, was just a a tragedy. Like, that, yeah. You, because you, I remember. Oh I don't want to get too into it because it is a sad situation. But I remember the they did like the the gender reveal, and he was so you know excited, and then. And then this, and you know, he'll he, you know, put everything out there that they're moving on. But you know, it can't help that uh, one of your teammates' girlfriends is literally saying bad stuff. So they move them. Uh, yeah. Funnily enough, to the Sharks, uh, who now have Eric Carlson, and then they flip him to the Panthers. Um, I mean, do I think Mike Hoffman's an awful, awful person? No, I think his girlfriend's an awful person. But uh, he is an addition. <laughs> 
to the Panthers that, you know, we'll see what happens. He had 56 points last year in 82 games on an awful sense team. Uh, and, you know, that, that rounds out that their blah, 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 blah. that rounds out their top six there, which is actually looking pretty nice. So they got Barkov, Huberdeau, Trocek, uh, Nick Bukestad, Evgeny Dadanoff, who came on late uh, last year. And then now you get Ad Hoffman. That's actually a pretty good uh, top six, which is weird to say for the Panthers. Yeah, um, but, a <laughs> and as always, uh, I'll keep coming back to it because it's it's – Goalies are so important. Uh, we, we will see who takes over the net this year. Uh, James Reimer, um, <clears throat> a guy that uh, I, I always liked. He was in Toronto for a while. They got him there. They also got Roberto Longo, who is now 39 years old. Uh, will he, you know, fade off? He actually looked really good last year. He had a 9.29 save percentage. Uh, and a 2.47 goals against in 33 games. Uh, the problem with him is he battled injuries all year. So who who takes charge? Who takes the net? And uh, that'll kind of determine where they go. Um, you got Aaron Eckblad back on defense, you know, trying to help him out. Um, yeah. The Panthers, I could see, uh, well, you'll see later, but I, I have high hopes for him this year. Um now we I mean <laughs> the, the teams we're going to now the next three next four teams I should say. Whew. All right, play get ready for this. We huh. got the uh, Detroit Red Wings, um, I, 30, 39, and thirteen last year. It feels like they did a lot worse, but there they are. Uh, I don't understand. I, I quite frankly, I'll just put it out there. I do not understand the the acquisitions they made this off season. So a team that should be re- rebuilding, right? You know, they're, they're not making the playoffs anytime soon. So what do they do? A rebuilding team, they go out there and they resign 32 year old Mike green. All right. Interesting. Then they go out and sign 34 year old Thomas Vanek, who's been bouncing around. Okay. And then you have 30 year old Jonathan Bernier signed. When you already have an old goaltender in Jimmy Howard. Uh, okay. <laughs> this is why you're the Detroit Red Wings. Um, and if you're counting at home, that adds up just those three players, Green, Vanek, and Bernier. That adds up to $11.375 million on the cap. Um, I just, I don't get it. I really don't. Um, just, just rebuild, man. So and, I just wanted yeah, to... Go ahead. to- I wanted to pull some stats, mm. Mike. So let's look at Mike. Let's let's first look at uh, let's look at Mike Green here, right? So let's look at last season and, and maybe just some overall interpretations. So Mike Green sits with uh, last year in sixty six games, he had thirty three points and a minus fourteen rating. I mean, he played on the Red Wings. That's not a surprise, <laughs> right? So then, here's here's. Uh, so yeah, he was on Washington originally, right? Yeah, that, uh, a couple he, years ago, yeah. He had three, I would say, career seasons. Mm. One in 2007, 2008 with 56 points in 82 games. Uh, back, all back to back to back, by the way. The following season, he's, he has 73 points with 31 goals and 42 assists in 2008, 2009. And then had 76 points with in 75 games played with 19 goals and 57 freaking assists. Yeah, I remember him being one of the best. And a 39 the plus. And yeah. a 39 plus. He was one of the best offensive defensemen in the league for sure. Um, right. And listen, he's 32. He's not totally old. Like, I mean, he's older. He's yeah. been around a while, but it, but but on the on the trend that he's been on lately, is he worth another contract for a rebuilding team. I, you know what? As much as I don't get it for the Red Wings, what is in it for you, Mike Green? Like, like you're 32. It, this goes for all these guys. There are I mean, other teams that are probably looking for someone like him, too. Because he, he was rumored to go to Tampa last year as a as a um, trade deadline day yeah. deal. Uh, but he decided to stay with the Detroit Red Wings. <laughs> you gotta wonder if he... He's just kind of, yeah. I mean, listen. People can fall in love with a team, right? I mean, 
for weird reasons, yes. <laughs> yeah, for well, I it could be for a number of reasons, right? I mean, no, it would be hard to say. Like, if I were an NHLer and I got drafted to the Flyers, why would I want to leave the team I've been a fan of for twenty years of my life? You know what I mean? Like, it it, it could be for any particular reason, right? Yeah, for sure. But it um, I I it's I just blame it on Detroit. Like Mike Green could say he wants to say doesn't mean Detroit has to resign him. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like they could have uh, easily made a deal, I, or I just let know. him go, and then bring up some someone in their prospect. I don't know anything about their prospect pool, but I'm sure they had somebody. Yeah, I mean they. Well, I mean they've been dr- they've been drafting like top five every year, so it's it's all right. right. But th- here's the problem with Detroit, and as it doesn't make sense because as bad as they are, they're not looking good because they're the the. The bad contracts that they've handed out is killing them. Um, right. They're a terrible team and have no cap space, like hands down. So you got Franz Nielsen, uh, a third, uh, a fringe second line, third line center. You know he's mm-hmm. all right. He's making five point two five for the next four years. Yep. <laughs> then you got Justin Applicator, who, when he signed the deal, I remember it was an eight year deal, um, and. He was a third line winger at this point for four point two five for the next five years. He still has five years in that contract. And then Danny DeKaiser on defense, five million for the next four years. Like like what are you what are you doing? <laughs> like, it, it doesn't make sense. Like it doesn't make any sense. Like the, the contracts they're making, like I the one positive for them this year is uh Philip Z- Philip Zadina fell to them at number six, which he was a potential um Pick at number two. Uh, he's looked really good at camp. Uh, the guy has insane hands. Uh, so, it, you know, maybe I don't see him playing for them this year. Uh, maybe he does. I don't know. I, I would Who keep knows, him. Man. I would keep him as far away from that team as I could until they figured the fuck out. Uh, but, um, yeah, just I don't get it. And then the other big news, we covered this on the podcast. Um, not too long ago, but Henrik Zetterberg, uh, long-time Red Wing, uh, retired this offseason due to a back injury. So there's that. Uh, and then the, I guess, uh, talking about the Lightning uh, before, um, Steve Eiserman steps down, and there's a lot of speculation that he might come to the to the uh, Red Wings as we have the new Seattle team coming in. Um, the GM of the Red Wings might go there. Uh, it's 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 all up in the air at this point. Um, but Steve Eiserman, maybe he comes back uh, to the team that he played for for so long. What I don't know. Anyway, we move on from that fucking debacle there. Dumpster fire. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's a good word. Uh, speaking of dumpster fires, the Montreal Canadiens. Um, <laughs> wow, were they bad last year? Mm-hmm. Uh, twenty nine, forty, and thirteen, and I don't necessarily think it's going to get much better. So they trade Alex Gatchenyuk, which forever, you know, for whatever reason, they never liked the guy. So they wanted him to play center. It wasn't really working out. He was much better on the wing. So they said, okay, fuck you. We're going to ship you out for another winger. So I don't know what the point was for that, but whatever. Uh, So they get Max Domi, who uh, in his first preseason game decided to punch Aaron Ekblad right in the face uh, without uh, Ekblad having anything to say about it. He was suspended for the rest of the preseason. Um, mm. Slap on the wrist there, but whatever. Yep. Uh, Dummy had 45 points in 82 games last year. Um, you know, I, that's not terrible, but uh, Galchenyuk, um, I I always thought he was a good player. Um, and then, you know, Max Domi is a guy that I think actually does have a lot of potential. Uh, maybe he changes scenery, helps him out there. Uh, maybe changing scenery helps this guy out. Max Pacioretty gets dealt. Uh, again, talked about this in the podcast, so I won't spend too long on on it. But he gets dealt for Thomas Tatar, Nick Suzuki, and his 2019 second round pick. Uh, so the uh, what was a t- somewhat of a toxic relationship there, even though he said he wanted to stay multiple mm-hmm. times, uh, is now over. He is in Vegas, and uh, I guess you know. The, the the main thing with them last year that really hurt them was the play of Carey Price. He was not himself last year. No. The numbers that he put up, he had a nine a point nine save percentage. 
and uh, goals against average of 11.3. Uh, 3.11 3. there, pal. Oh, three. Oh, my. Wow. Gosh. Le- you said 11.3. Yo, you imagine a goalie? Jesus Christ. Hello. All right. Good morning. Morning. <laughs> um, and, you know, that's not good enough, right? And to make matters worse, and look, I still think Harry Price has, is, could, you know, one good season, he could return to the best goalie, you know, in the league. Uh, but his uh, contract extension kicks in this year. It's $10.5 million uh, a season. Um, so if he continues to play like he did last year, he is not going to be worth a single penny of that. Um, and again, I'm hitting, watch this transition. I'm hitting him today. Shea Weber, another guy who, okay, maybe he's not worth, he, he's worth some pennies, but not all of them. Uh, he's not going to be around for the start of the season. He is not going to be around until December. Uh, he had surgery this off season, uh, orthoscopic surgery for torn meniscus. Hey, I know about that (laughs) (laughs) in his right knee. Uh, and he is expected to be out until, like I said, December. And also Andrew Shaw will probably miss the first, uh, first couple of weeks of the season. He'll return back in late October. The, uh, I don't know. So this guy was picked third, uh, in the, in the draft, uh, by the Canadians. And there's a lot of, criticism uh who i'm talking about obviously is uh kat Kat kanyemi uh who they thought for sure would be going back to finland um for a year but he's actually made the roster uh it's it was announced i think yesterday he's on the team uh after a lot of criticism about the draft uh he will be making the team and uh yeah the they're you know hopefully the Canadians can turn it around this year. Their numbers last year were horrible. Uh, they were third last in goals per game. That was their big problem. They could not score, and their PK was second worst. That's seventy four point one percent. Going along the theme of just bad Canadian teams, unfortunately, is I hate to say that, but they just have been the dumpster fire for sure. Dumpster fire. That is the Sens. Where do we start? <laughs> Well, <laughs> let's start immediately with Carlson. Well, let's start immediately. I mean, again, touching this on the podcast, I get that. But, you know, we're a team. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> like, let's, 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 let's play it. It's like we, we have to play it. I yeah, mean, just for I, anybody who missed but, it. But it's not yet. Yeah, we've been playing the hell out of this on the past couple of podcast episodes, but because we just think it's hilarious. So here's, here's uh, Pierre Dorian. Pierre, what's the number one thing you're optimistic about in terms of the Ottawa Senators? We're a team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A team, a team that last year went 20, 43, and 11 with 67 points. Finished seventh in the Atlantic. And I don't think you had the question that they missed the playoffs. So, uh, and it can only uh-huh. get worse this year, right? I it uh, how how does it get worse? Tell me how it gets worse, Tyler. Well, if you may have heard, but one of the best defensemen in the league left. He got traded for, uh, and as as much as I love the guys that the Sharks got rid of, he got traded for a bag of pucks in terms of what Eric Carlson is <laughs> worth. Guys, the hell out of him. I don't. Care. <laughs> and uh, Mike Hoffman's gone, so the two. You know, again, we talked about it, the, that problem last year. They're, they're gone, uh, even though Eric Carlson was not a problem. Uh, and then, you know, to make matters worse, they don't have their first overall pick this year, or their first round pick, I should say, this year. That, uh, if you remember, got uh, went over to Colorado for the Matt Duchesne deal. Uh, and Matt Duchesne is on the last year, year of his deal. Uh, also, Mark Stone um, signed a one-year extension with them over the summer, which I don't know why you would do that, uh, that torture to yourself. But he also has one year left. So essentially, the core of your team is either gone or has one year left on on their contract. Uh, I am so sorry, Senators fans. (laughs) That's all I can say. Uh, To make matters worse, Marion, well, this is uh, Marion Gabrick might miss the season. Honestly, I mean, he's not that big of a, a 
player anymore, but the one that hurts is uh, Peugeot, uh, Jean Gabriel Peugeot. Will miss four to six months. He tore his Achilles recently, uh, and and that they're you know one of their young centers. He is going to be out for four to six months. Uh, it just gets worse and worse for them. Um, I guess the one positive is uh, Brady Kachuk uh, is their prospect. Uh, again, one of those guys where uh, does he go back to college or does he stay on the roster? Again, if I was them, he does not even see Ottawa. Do not even let him in the city. Get him <laughs> away from that roster. You do not want him uh, affected by that. And then I just had the one last note I have here is, and, and this just goes to show you how bad that, that Eric Carlson trade one because a lot of the talk, if you remember, was, okay, so you get Carlson, but you have to take on Bobby Ryan's contract uh, in the trade. Guess what? He's still there. And that $7.25 million contract uh, a year for the next four years are still on the books. Uh, and, you know, it's funny because their owner, uh, Eugene Melnick, uh, does not want to spend money uh, especially overpaying guys. And, you know, you say, oh, all this stuff, yeah, we're going to move uh, Bobby Ryan with with Carlson. Uh, he's still there. Carlson is not. I, I, we're going to move on because this is just depressing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're an Ottawa fan, I am sorry. Last team in the Atlantic and the Eastern Conference that we're going to get to here is the Buffalo Sabres, who who finished last uh, in the Atlantic last year, 25-45 and 12, 62 points. They got the first overall pick, uh, and, and with that pick, obviously, picked the very talented Rasmus Dahlien. Uh, you know, I think every year that we say the Sabres are going to get better, I truly believe they have a chance. To get, no, look, now, they're not a playoff team, but I, I no. think they have a chance to get to you know, make a little bit of noise. Uh, They're not going to be last in the Atlantic. I mean, hope I, if they are, <laughs> then then whew. there's a problem. If you're worse than the Sens, that's bad. Uh, we <laughs> talked about it earlier, but they acquired Jeff Skinner uh, from the Carolina Hurricanes, and again, didn't give up much there. Uh, the other big trade that they made was that uh, somebody they got rid of, but they actually got a pretty nice package back with it. So they got rid of Ryan O'Reilly. He went to the Blues uh, in return. They got uh, Sabotka, Patrick, Berg- Patrick Berglund, and Tage Thompson. Uh, also a 2019 first-round pick and a 2020 second-round pick. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly is is one of the better, uh, I guess, I guess two-way players and uh, two-way centers in the league. He's got one of the best face-off percentages in the league. Uh, so you get rid of him. Um, but you do get a, a couple of nice pieces back. Uh, Tage Thompson is a good prospect, and you get the picks. Uh, and and Berglund could be a, an all right player. Um, you know, some of that is also cap dump, um, but he could be a good player for them. So we'll see. Uh, and then the uh, the signing that well, I, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Uh, so Carter Hutton, uh, the backup for the Blues last year, he had a really good year last year. I'm not discounting that. Uh, he had a nine point, uh, Jesus Christ, point nine three one <laughs> save percentage <laughs> last year, two point oh nine goals against average, twenty six games. That's really, that's really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was also a backup, and we tend to see this in the NHL where uh, a guy has a good campaign as a backup. He goes to a team, and and then he's a bust. Now, yeah, the Sabers actually did a decent job because i originally thought that this guy was going to make four five million dollars a year um i'm you know i'm going to check this i i just seen this earlier but um you know you can you can really mess up on a contract like that uh for like a guy that had one good season uh he's he's making 2.75 for the next three years uh on a guy that again you know i thought he can make three, four million dollars or, you know, three and a half, four million dollars. So uh, they didn't overspend too much. He is 32 years old. Uh, but like I said, he had a really good season last year. Uh, so we'll see kind of what happens there. But hey, man, like, I, I think the Sabres have a legitimate chance to make some noise this year. Like I said, not 
going to be a playoff team, in my opinion. Uh, they still have a long way to go. But uh, you got Casey Middlestat, uh, the American who is amazing to watch in the World Juniors. He's he's up for them. Uh, Jack Eichel got paid this summer, making 10 uh, mil a season. Um, yeah, though they're... They're a team that I'm just waiting to be good. It's been a couple of years, and uh, you know, hopefully they'll. A couple uh, of missing pieces. That's all. Yeah, I think if they improve their back end, I mean, getting Rasmus Dahlin is <laughs> definitely going to help. Good that. start. Yep. Yeah, good start. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think that's that's a you know they have a chance to make a little bit of noise. Um, do we want to? Do we want to uh, give our? Um, playoff predictions i guess for the east now or do you want to save it till the end no you know that's it that's it all right so we uh are just going to look at the playoff picture um so we'll give the top three from the metro and the atlantic and then we'll give the wild card team so <clears throat> excuse me for me i do not have the metro changing i have caps pens flyers uh i see you know the caps are such a good i mean they were a good playoff team last year too obviously but they're always such a good regular season team. Uh, I think they've won the Metro the last three years, I want to say. Something like that. So, yeah, something like that. Uh, I think off the back of, uh, you know, that, that core they have of Ovechkin, Oshi, Kuznetsov, Carlson, Holtby, I think, I think they get there. Um, the Pens, like, you can never discount the Pens. Like, I think they'll always be a good team, but just something about them this year doesn't seem right. I don't know what it is. <laughs> isn't it a weird? Isn't it a weird? Well, it's because they didn't, they weren't that strong last year. I mean, yeah, I mean, I they, mean, they, I mean they, yeah, coming from the Flyers fan, which listen, they beat the shit out of us in the playoffs, but like <laughs> something's off. Yeah, I don't know if it's not having Flurry or I don't know what, but it, it's it's one of those weird feelings that that I'm 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 with you on this one. I get a weird feeling from them too, but they're still gonna beat Philly, so. Yeah. Uh and then in the Atlantic, uh not much changing here either. Lightning I have up top. Uh the only change I have is the Leafs um being the two seed this year and the Bruins being the three seed. Uh that would be an interesting matchup to see them again in the playoffs. And then my two wild card teams, I uh, have the Blue Jackets mm. coming out of the Metro and the Panthers. Uh I think that those top six that top six that they have, I think um their depth is pretty good. Uh again. It's all going to come down to goaltending. Does Luongo have the season he had last year um, and, and is able to play more games than I think they get in the playoffs? They had a, a nice late season push last year. So I, that's that's uh, my top uh, for, the, for the Eastern Conference. So Caps, Pens, Flyers, Lightning, Leafs, Bruins, Jackets, Panthers. Uh, and Bobby, you can go ahead with your predictions for the East. Okay, mine are really going to be no different except for wild card picks. So again, the Metro, I got Caps, Pens, Flyers. I don't think there's really much more to say there. Caps are still a strong team. I think they're still the strongest in the Metro. Pens are still going to be second. They, I mean, they still have, I mean, literally everybody. Crosby, Malkin, everybody. <laughs> and then the Flyers, which I, I feel like, you know, it was it was more of a question mark whether they'd be a three last season. I think that they're like a definite three, especially with their offseason moves. So, I'd, agree. I'd agree with that for sure, yeah. So I, I see them being a solid three. I don't think it's any question unless everything just tanks with goaltending, then we'll be fine. Uh, Atlantic, again, Lightning Leafs Bruins. I mean, Leafs are just going to be a fun team. Like I said, they're fun to watch anyway. But now with signing JT, JT and Austin Matthews being on the same team, that's going to be so much fun to watch. It's it's going to be great. Lightning with Kucherov is going to be really strong. Uh, Bruins have some question marks, but again, not a strong three. Uh, so my wild card's a little bit different. Um, I have Jackets being the top wild card. They were the thorn in Philly's side last year. I went to the game that basically uh, it was right, right toward the end uh, last month. Or so it was like April or something where they played. And uh, whoever won took the uh, third place spot. Uh, not, yeah. to, not, not clinching, but uh, yeah. still a big game no matter what. And I went to that game and God was that a pain in the ass to watch. Um, so many problems with the Flyers there, but um, they're still a great team, so got them uh, top wild card. And the second, I do not have the Panthers. I have the Devils. I don't know how, you know, with with the season that Taylor Hall had, I, I don't. To me, he's going to carry this team again, and I, I think he's going to carry him straight to the wild card. And once I, you know, it's going to be, it might be a rough start, especially with Snyder not, uh, especially with Corey Snyder being hurt 
But once he's back, I, I see this team uh, being pretty solid. Um, and, and enough for a playoff team. I, I, I don't believe in the Panthers as much as Tyler does. Um, I think the Devils definitely have, have that second wild card spot filled out. All right, now we are going to head over to the Western Conference, starting with the Central Division and the Nashville Predators coming off their President's Trophy last year. Uh, they finished the season with 117 points, 53, 18, and 11. A uh, crazy season for them. Fortunately for them, they ran into the Winnipeg Jets in the second round, who took them down in seven games. Uh, the big story there for me, so Pecorino, this is crazy to talk about since Pecorino won the Vezina last year. But he's always been a really good regular season goalie. Last year, he put up a 9.27 save percentage and, uh, and a 2.31 goals against average in 59 games. Started, that is. Mm-hmm. Uh, then the playoffs roll around, right? And we get playoff Pekka, okay? 9.04 <laughs> save percentage, 3.07 goals against average in 13 games. My question to you is, he's 35 years old. He's on his last year of his contract, and he's just he's an outstanding regular season goalie, but he just cannot perform in the playoffs. And they got a guy in UC Soros who is a very good, you know, he's a goalie prospect, but now he's he's a backup. And if if Pecorino was not in front of him, he would be starting for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you? <laughs> We're talking about Pecorino here off of Vezin Trophy, but do you think this could be his last dance with Nashville? Uh, I, dude, I don't know. It, okay. I, I love Pecorino. Like, yeah. I, I love him a lot. I mean, uh, he's just, I don't know, he's just one of those goalies I just I, I love watching play. I mean, he's just so fun to watch. Yeah. In the right so, yeah. season, that is. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah. But, like, so, yeah, he's. Here's what they're gonna have to figure out. Can is Soros gonna be another Rene, I guess, right? I mean, they what they might do is they might give uh Soros a a, a, a few more games than normal for a backup. Just to yeah. sh- tread waters, right? And then if they find out, hey, then uh hey, this guy might be the the the, the future for us, then all right, Rene's on the market. Yeah. Um yeah. And trust me, there's a lot of, I mean, he's 35 and with that one year left, but there's a lot of teams I know that could use a Pecorino. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, listen, he's 35. Getting up there, right? But he's still an elite goaltender. I mean, yeah. his save yeah, percentage yeah, yeah. goals against is proving that. And look, I understand this is a crazy conversation we're having because he just came off of Vesna yeah. as the best goalie in the league. However,. Yeah. You know, as good as regular season stats are, if, uh, you know, a 904 shape percentage in the playoffs is not going to cut it. Uh, and obviously that was the case uh, with them uh, with them leaving. And again, it's it's a crazy conversation, I know, but I honestly think it's a realistic chance. And like I said, UC it Soros is. is a good backup uh, or, you know, a good backup now, which and he should be a good starter in the future. Yeah. Um it's going to be real interesting. And, and the Preds, I think, uh, you know, it's uh, pretty obvious, but I think there'll be another contender this year, uh, a strong contender, that is. Um, you know, you get to the playoffs, and hypothetically, you, you know, th- so they get past the first round because they'll probably be playing, like, a wild card game. But they, they run into Winnipeg again in the second round. Game one, they lose, I don't know, 5-1. Next game, they lose 6-2. You're, uh, yo, I'm going UC Soros. Like, if if we're thinking like about, and I and I know it's like a broad statement, like you know, six goals and maybe not of Mars' fault, but let's just say he performs like he did this year. I'm going Soros. Sorry, Rene. I, I know you're great, <laughs> but yeah. Uh the uh, <clears throat> excuse me. They resigned uh, Ryan Ellis this off season. Uh, eight year deal for him, six point two five million a year. And that kicks in next year. Uh, he's on a ridiculous deal right now. Uh, he's one of the best defensemen in the league, and he's making like two point something something. Uh, so that kicks in next year. Um, they have one of the best. Uh, well, actually, they have the second best re- at, uh, defensive rating in the uh, NHL right now, according to the ESPN with the preseason rankings. They have Ryan Ellis, Matias Ekholm, uh, Roman Yossi, PK Subban. That is a scary top four. 
Um, but there is a, a great team that takes the number one spot for that. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, the the new another thing we cover on the podcast uh, that I just want to touch on again, Austin Watson suspended for the first 27 games of the season after the domestic abuse case with his, uh, I want to say girlfriend, uh, girlfriend or wife, uh, either or. Um, uh, so, yeah, he will miss uh, the first 27 games of the season. Pretty decent uh, loss, I mean. Yeah, you know, center depth. Uh, it's well, a body. I, I'm not defending Austin Watson, <laughs> obviously. Uh, no. He's supposed to be missing those games. I, I mean, but just as a team, at, looking at it as a, as a team perspective, yeah, I think uh, it, it's a loss there. But uh, Watson, you need to you need to learn your lesson. Uh, <laughs> The way to put it. Uh, the uh, uh, interesting uh, thing I want to point out too is, uh, e- um, excuse me, Eli Tovanen, uh, who is one of their better prospects, uh, was supposed to like like last year uh, was one of those guys that uh, when he finished his season up in the KHL, he came over and played for the Preds. Uh, thought he was going to make the team easy. That's not the case. Uh, they actually uh, sent him back to the AHL. Now, they want him to stay there. Uh, the problem is he's not really happy about that, and there's a chance he goes back over to the KHL, uh, which is doesn't sound like much, but the problem is a lot of the times uh, when that happens, and, and I will say it happens more with Russian players. He is not Russian. He's Finnish. But, like, a lot of the guys go back over to the KHL, stay in the KHL, just because of something like this happening. So uh, he's one of the one of their future stars. So uh, hopefully that doesn't happen, but yeah, I thought for sure he'd make the team and he didn't. Um, but yeah, they'll, they'll be a contender again. They have really good depth up front. The reason why Tolbert and did not make the team. Uh, and then that defense back there with one of the best tandems in the league, they'll definitely be a contender for sure. Uh, moving on, we'll, we'll talk about the team that eliminated them. Um, <clears throat> the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, with a very good record here of 52, 20, and 10, 114 points. Uh, second in the Central, and then, as we said, they uh, beat the National Predators in round two just to be uh, not swept, but in five games. It felt like a sweep. Uh, the Golden Knights beat the shit out of them in the third round. <laughs> um, it's, I mean, that... <sighs> That was bad. That second round matchup with the Jets and the Preds was really good. And then it's like, all right, whoever wins this series is going to win against Golden Knights. But always doubting the Golden Knights. Shouldn't do that. Excuse me. Um, so their big signing over the or re-signing, I should say, over the summer is Blake Wheeler. Gets a five-year contract worth $8.25 million a year uh, that kicks in next year. Uh, he had 91 points in 81 games last year. Really good season. Had 68 a point, 68 assists, I should say, uh, and was tied for first in the league with Claude Giroux. Uh, they lost. Uh, they lost a little bit of center depth, uh, losing Paul Stasny, who they got from the Blues last year at the trade deadline. He goes to Vegas, uh, so a little bit of a loss there. But they still have uh, an insane forward group, uh, led by the top line of. Uh, Kyle Connor, Mark Scheifele, and Blake Wheeler, uh, one of the dirtiest, filthiest lines in hockey. Uh, and yeah. fall, uh, again, it's one of those situations, again, you know, we were talking about, like me talking about Voracek not being on the first line. Like Patrick Laine is not on that first line, and that's still one of the best lines in the league. Yep. Uh, their top four on defense is stacked. They got Dustin Bufflin, Jacob Truba, uh, Josh Morsey, who just uh, recently uh, resigned. I believe it was a bridge deal. I don't know the, the exact you know, uh, in terms of that, but yeah, he took a little bit less for a little bit less term and Tyler Myers running it out. Now, Connor Ellibuck had a breakout season last year, uh, 0.924 save percentage and a 236 goals against average, 64 starts. Uh, one of those guys that was also a workhorse finished second in Vesna voting. Uh, I really, really liked how he played last year. He, he seems very calm in the net. Uh, doesn't, doesn't, he's not like, you know, obviously, when he has to, he flops around, but he's very well positioned. Uh, really like what I seen out of him last year. Uh, and their numbers, uh, they had a really good regular season, obviously, with the record they had, and their numbers support that. Second in goals, uh, four per game, and fifth in goals against last season. Uh, I expect the Jets to be uh, one of the 
uh, one of the premier contenders this year. His pass, Miss Barter. Instrum. Flushed out quickly. I don't know if you remember that, but that's the Jets chanting Lonnie's better at Toronto. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was not I was like, all right, I don't want this play. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, just want to play that. It's a, I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, um, yeah the whole debate with uh, Winnipeg and, and, and uh, Toronto. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't have a, a say on this. I will say they both got two really good players. So yeah, really. That's good. <laughs> I wish I had them on my team. Uh, next, we've moved to the Minnesota Wild, who – they are just one of those teams that they'll get to the playoffs and then first round exit year after year. Now, granted, they did run into Winnipeg, uh, who, I mean, that central division is just murderer's row. Uh, they got in, but, you know, they're playing Winnipeg. They got they lost in five. Uh, 101 points last year. Uh, not a bad season. Uh, they re-signed Jason Zucker and Matt Dumba uh, to five years extensions, um, and Zucker got a 5.5 AAV, and Dumba got a 6 million AAV. Uh, they're, so I was looking at their, their contracts earlier, and again, one of those teams where it, it'll be interesting to see where they go because they don't have necessarily um, – superstars that are going to, like they don't really have anybody great that's going to be a free agent but they have a lot of these fringe guys depending on the season i guess you would kind of figure out what direction they're going to go one of the guys uh that i'm talking about is eric stall who had a really good breakout year last year he has one more year on his deal uh he's getting up there in age is that somebody you stick with you know what do you do um something's got to change because uh like i said you can't be friggin' I, I know it's tough again in that in that division, but going in there and losing a first round every year is not a great look. Uh as you'll see in my predictions later, I think they take a little bit of a step back this year. I think Minnesota's been so stagnant with where they are, like in the playoff picture for the past like five years. It's really uh, weird. I and I don't know, maybe this is just a vibe I'm getting. It just feels like they're like, all right, we're here in the playoffs. Like that's all that matters to us. <laughs> like, I mean, Minnesota does eat it up, though. Like, I mean, they're the crowd is really good. I like they're, they're yeah. cr- the crowd is into it. Um, but, but they could do a lot better. I mean, again, the, the Central Division is the best division in hockey. I don't like. I'm saying that as opinion, but it might as well be a fact. Uh, the, the division's so good and. Um, not a hot take. <laughs> not a hot take. No, but seriously, like, you know, they, they get in that three. Um, you, then you got to play either Winnipeg or Nashville basically every season from now on uh, yeah. until they get bad. So, uh, moving on. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, finishing fourth in the Central last year, uh, 43, 30, and 9, 95 points. Uh, they were eliminated in the first round against Nashville, which they were supposed to. However, they actually put up a pretty good fight. Um, it, so, you know, props to them um, and a complete turnaround from the previous season. Uh, yeah. They <laughs> had one of the worst records of all time in 2016-17. They went 22-56-4. and four. That's not good. <laughs> uh last year, like I said, forty three, thirty and nine, they turn it around, they make the playoffs. Uh and most of that just being again, I feel like the theme, uh we talked about Taylor Hall earlier with the Devils. Nathan McKinnon just said, Guys, get on my back, I'm gonna carry you to yep. where we need to go. Seventy four games played, thirty nine goals, fifty eight assists, fifty eight assists, ninety seven points, plus eleven rating. Um you know, as much, and again, it's it's one of the situations he carries them, and and that's a great and all, but there's just not much depth there. Um, they have some nice players coming up. They have Tyson Yost as a center. I really like that. Um, you know, like he's he's great and all, but you need some more depth than that. You need some more experienced guys. Their first line is insane. Landis Hog, McKinnon, Rantanen. We'll see if they maybe split that up. Um, but their team is just so young. Like, it's insane. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, it's good. And and we were talking about Ottawa earlier. Obviously, they have, you know, that first-round pick from Ottawa. Uh, maybe, you know, there's a good chance Ottawa finishes last. They get 
Jack Hughes out of the draft, and maybe he makes it. It's it's looking good for Avalanche. I, I really like their direction. Mm. Uh, we discussed this earlier. They picked up Philip Grubauer from the Washington Capitals. Now it's going to be interesting to see if he starts there. They still have Verlamov there. Uh, they had Bernier who went to the Red Wings. So they're you know they're. Uh, I feel like for the past few years now Verlamov has been okay, but. Um, it's just like it's kind of a carousel because Varlamov also has been getting hurt. So it's like he'll play like 20 games and then it's like, oh, look who's playing like their backup. And then like their third string is playing. It's always interesting with the uh, with the abs. But like I said, that team is so young. Uh, another team that's going to be really, really nice to watch uh, for years to come. Uh, the team that they beat out in the final game of the regular season to get into the playoffs, the St. Louis Blues, 44, 32, and 6, 94 points. Uh, like I said, it was the last game of the season. It was storybook stuff, uh, Avalanche and the Blues in Colorado. The Avs end up winning that game uh, and then events of the playoffs. Uh, I really like the additions of the Blues this, yep. this offseason. Uh, so the, you got Ryan O'Reilly, who we talked about earlier, uh, 61 points last year. Tyler Bozak, another – uh, depth center could probably be their probably be their third third he's line. Okay. He's definitely a there. third line. Uh, Forty three points last year. David Perron comes back uh, to St. Louis from that crazy year back in uh, Vegas. He was taken by Vegas in the expansion draft from the Blues. He goes back. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And Pat Maroon uh, goes there. I believe that is his hometown team. I'm not sure. So that's a pretty pretty cool story. Uh, Little uh, injury update here. Robbie Fabry cleared uh, after the ACL tear in last September. And uh, Jake Allen, we were talking about Carter Hutton earlier. The reason he got so many games is because the play of this guy. Uh, and this is not a good look since he's my second goalie in fantasy hockey. But 27, <laughs> 25, and 3, uh, 2.75 goals against average, which is not terrible. But it's, you no. know, but this is better. terrible. The 9 point, uh, point, 906 save percentage is what's terrible. Uh, hopefully, it bounce back here. Like I said, he has a better team in front of him, so that probably helps. <laughs> uh, you know, helps with the stats there. But uh, like I said, I really like the the additions they made. They were very aggressive in the off season. They gave up, uh, you know, some pieces for Ryan O'Reilly, but uh, definitely one of the better centers in the league. I uh, still got Tarasenko there, uh, who's tearing it up. Um, Alex Pietrangelo on the back. Uh, so they're looking good. I think there'll be a, a team that gets back on the playoffs this year. Mm. Uh, we move on to another team who has been missing the playoffs, but they really shouldn't be. The Dallas Stars, uh, 42-32-8, and eight, uh, six in the Central. Uh, again, just, that, you know, I... You said it was a hot take earlier about my central, but let's like look at this. So like they missed the playoffs at 42, 32, and eight. Right. 92 points. Missed the playoffs. Crazy stuff. Uh, something that you'll uh, you'll love. They were on an eight-game losing streak starting March 11th, <laughs> and the Flyers come to town. <laughs> I, we, I remember this vividly for some reason. Uh, and, shout out to shout out to the Reddit post that I found when when doing this research earlier. That uh, the user was like. Dallas is on an eight-game losing streak, and they're playing the Flyers. For those of you excited about this game, don't be. You know exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> yep. Yep. I, I, like, I I remember, like, I think the Sharks might have been playing early that night, and then I turned on this game, and I was like, there's no way the Flyers win this game. Uh, you know, the, the Flyers win this game. Of course right. they don't. Mm -hmm. The Flyers are going to do. Uh, the crucial news for them coming uh, this offseason, Tyler Sagan resigns eight years, $78.8 million overall. Um, one of our favorite players. Uh, he's always just seemed like a really good guy, really chill. Uh, and, you know, he's um, one of those guys in the NHL that we need more of. Like, he doesn't seem to shy away from media stuff. Uh, he did a lot when he came back to Toronto for there was a, a event and it's and it's escaping my mind right now. But it was a, a training event up in Toronto where a lot of NHL guys went. He was there and he wasn't shying away from the media. So a really good guy there. Uh, the the big uh, thing with the stars is their back end and their goalie, Ben Bishop. Uh, the dude just cannot seem to stay healthy. He's day to day right now. He just has a minor strain. 
Last year had a, a decent season, nothing spectacular. Uh, well, I mean, the the 2.35 goals against is, is okay. Uh, 9.919 uh, uh, save percentage is not great. Uh, five shutouts last year, though, 51 game start at 26, 17, and 5. Uh, part of that is because of the defense is not the greatest there. They have John Klingberg, but, um, you know, uh, Mark Mathot is there too now. Maybe if he has a healthy season, it kind of helps out. But, uh, you know, get some defense in front of him. Uh, maybe maybe that helps him out. And uh, they had a little bit of a spending spree this offseason. Um, Anton Kudobin comes in, uh, replacing uh, Kerry Let- uh as, as the backup goalie. Uh, Blake Como comes in. Uh, Val Nachushkin, who uh, was actually a guy, you know, I was talking earlier about the guys that go over to the KHL and then, you know, sometimes never come back. Well, this was the case with him for a couple of years. He's finally coming back. And uh, our favorite signing <laughs> of the free agent window, Roman Polak. What a guy. Wow. He's in Dallas. So, um, that his slow ass, I'm sure, will do great down there. <laughs> uh, the key here is Bishop in that back end. That that offense is more than capable enough. Uh, you got Jamie Ben, Radulov, Sagan, um, headlining there. I think uh, they have a real good chance uh, to make some noise. Uh, I hope they do for their sake. Uh, you know, you were talking about Tampa being having a soft spot for them for some reason. That it's the stars with me. Uh, yeah. I have no reason to like them. Uh, a little, you know, but there's just that part of me that uh, that does. So they have nice jerseys. They did, well. My favorite color is green. That might have something. They're so lit. So I yeah. like, and I also like Mike Madonna. So mm, what a great Back guy! What a guy! What a guy! <laughs> what a guy. True American. Uh, and then we move on to the last team in the Central, which is really weird uh, to say. Last year, finishing seventh and last, the Chicago Blackhawks, thirty-three, thirty-nine, and ten, seventy-six points. They did not qualify, of course, for the playoffs. Um. Part of that of that tough season they had was uh, Corey Crawford uh, was having uh, some concussion problems, had some vertigo problems, missed a large chunk of the season. Uh, if you remember, they had a lot of goal injuries, so much, in fact, that Scott Foster, uh, the emergency backup goalie, came in against the Winnipeg Jets. and That, that was, was awesome. That was one of my favorite things ever. Uh, yeah, I know. Yep. Uh, so he comes in. But now Crawford is still questionable this year. To be honest, I haven't heard much of an update in terms of like this year. Like I, It just sounds a lot of the same that I was hearing last year. I like, just, I just heard Vertigo, he wasn't so starting. I just heard he yeah. wasn't starting. Uh, uh, he, he, he's not – like he's not – I'm sorry. He's not ready for the season opener was right. last I heard. I'm gotcha. sorry. He's still yeah. the starting goaltender because how do you not start Corey Crawford? Yeah. But yeah. he's not – uh, I don't think he's going to be ready for the season opener. Yeah, uh, I mean, and concussion, you know, stuff like that. Anything messing with your head, you got to take very seriously. So, uh, yep. hopefully, we'll see him back. But uh, in the meantime, uh, coming over from Carolina, Cam Ward. Um, again, it's it's going to be weird seeing him in a different jersey. Uh, he comes over, uh, and and again, what was such a. a uh, underwhelming, I'll say, is the word I'm looking for. Tandem last year with him and Scott Darling. Uh, he had 42 uh, starts last year. He played 43 games, just came in for one. 23 14 of four is not a bad record, um, but just 2.73 goals against average, a 906 save percentage, not good enough. Uh, and if the Blackhawks want to have any chance of turning things around, if Crawford is out, that's going to have to change. Uh, two shoutouts for Cam Ward on the season last year. Uh, one guy, uh, definitely a, a guy to look out for is Alex Dabrinkit. Uh, coming off a stellar rookie season, um, 82 games played, 28 goals, 24 assists for 52 points. Uh, he's one of the, uh, you know, one of the better upcoming rook, uh, not rookies anymore, but young guns is the word I'm looking for in the NHL. Uh, I'll never forget um, a couple of years ago, uh, they were, you know, the USA was selecting their roster for the World Junior teams. I say a couple of years ago. I think it was only two years ago. Uh, they were. Was that long ago? Yeah. So they were selecting their roster for the yeah. uh, the World Juniors, and he's not on it. And that was crazy because uh, 
his numbers uh, in junior were like literally off the charts, ridiculous, um, insane. And then he didn't get selected, and people uh, were not too happy about that. But uh, it ended up working out for the U.S. anyway because they won the tournament. So um, and the shootout. Uh, yeah, it was two years ago, I believe, because it was the shootout with Canada, or I say shootout with Canada. Yeah, they're they're all shootouts with Canada. But yeah. Uh, and then the last point, Bobby added this because why? You know, it's fucking Brandon Manning just joining the mix. Bobby's uh, favorite player, um, <laughs> not. Uh, he's joining the mix there, and and uh, Chicago will be interesting. Uh, that that back end is aging uh, with uh, Duncan Keith, Brent Seabrook, uh, Duncan Keith. You now being one of the best defensemen. In the league, like only two years ago, last year, just just not doing it. Um, and you know, we still got Kane and Taze there. Uh, Taze, uh, don't hear much about him anymore. Uh, weirdly enough, I mean, there's I, I say weirdly enough, there is a good reason he's not putting out the points he used to, but uh, Patty Kane, uh, still one of the more electrifying stick handlers, uh, in the league. So we'll see if they can maybe bounce back, but that's yeah. a it's a tough division to bounce back in. I was just rewatching uh, his uh, little show off video where he has all the pucks lined up on the ice. Yeah, it, yeah. It just, it, dude, it, it's, it's not human. The, yeah. the way he's able to dangle like that. It's just not. Incredible. Reminded me how good he actually is. Like, you it's know, kind it, of a it, shame. I, I, I don't want to bring it up again because I keep feeling like I know I've been bringing it up a lot on the show, but like. Uh, Talking about a lot of Americans today, which is good. You know, we need uh yeah, some more American players. I mean, you know, it, it's it, what what I do like about the league is you get people from all over the place. Yeah, right? I mean, it's it, it's great to see, right? And you love to see it, but uh, I love to see it. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, you know, it's been kind of, I guess, more or less a joke a lot of times uh, with how generally, I say generally. Uh, American players are usually not on the caliber against, you know, other countries like Canada, Russia, yeah. stuff like that, Finland. I mean, uh, recently it's gotten better, but like, yeah, for yeah. a while. But I mean, you know, we we're talking about Austin Matthews earlier, uh, Casey Middlestat, uh, yeah. Alex DeBrinkett. Oh, nice yeah. stuff. Anyway, it's just try to add that. <laughs> All right. Next we're American, we're gonna, baby. <laughs> next, we're going to run over to the Pacific Division. Oh my god, are we on the final division of this? I know, I can't believe it. Uh, with, <laughs> you know, as I said earlier, we're starting off with, um, we're we're going with how the division finished last year, and starting off the Pacific Division, the Vegas Golden Knights still can't believe it to this day. Uh, You're still so salty about it, aren't you? You are still so. Oh, salty I'm not about happy it. about it. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, 51, 24, and 7 last year, 109 points. Uh, they made it all the way to the cup final in their inaugural season uh, just to be uh, – I say just to be. I mean, they shouldn't have gotten more than 20 wins last year. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they get to the final, losing 5 to the Washington Capitals. Uh, and crazy to think, you know, you coming into their inaugural season, you think they'd be like a, a regular team. and and not be good, but now they're out here making fucking moves to bolster their team next year. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy. So they signed Paul Stasny to a three-year, uh, six and a half million dollar contract. Uh, obviously, you know that's six and a half per year. Uh, had 53 points combined with the Blues and the Jets last year. We talked about the Max Pacioretty trade. Uh, this guy is a 60-point guy when he's fully healthy, or uh, when I'm sorry, yeah, when he's fully healthy, when he gets a full season. In. Now. I love Mark Andre Fleury. However, he killed the Sharks last year. Oh, in the he literally won the series for the for the Golden Knights against the Sharks. Um, I just, uh, I'm salty about it. Yeah, I definitely am. <laughs> uh, nine point uh, nine two seven save percentage during the year. Uh, two point two four goals against. Uh, it's crazy to think about because remember, like all the. Uh, the goalies they went through at the beginning of the season because of injuries. They had um, 
so they obviously started with Flurry. They had Malcolm Subban. They had that yeah. leg- legacy Legasse guy. They even had that one game. They had to bring in their their draft pick from the WHL in uh, as like kind of an emergency guy uh, because one of their uh, the legacy guy got hurt. So it's crazy. But mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> here are some stats that I'm not too happy about. Right. <laughs> So he had a great regular season, but the playoffs were even better. And now I should say it was the first two rounds of the playoffs where he really sh- uh, shined. So, I mean, Vegas co- goes in and sweeps the Kings. Uh, no problem. Uh, the Sharks, I'll actually say this. The Sharks gave, and you can see it in the game, the Sharks gave Vegas the hardest challenge, but they beat him in six. Mm-hmm. In the playoffs, Mark andre Fleury, in the first two rounds of the playoffs, had a point nine five two save percentage. <gasps> oh god, <Yep. clears throat> it's not fair. That's it really is. And now, and now you understand. You well, understand the, the the pain. As I'm talking about this, the image that comes to my head is now I forget what game it is. It was either game three or it was game three. That's right. <laughs> overtime and the Sharks have it in their zone and Logan Couture gets it in the slot wide open from a pass behind the net and Mark andre Fleury has no business saving this and he <laughs> flashes the leather on this dude <laughs> when we're supposed to go up 2-1 in the series what happens Vegas goes down and scores minutes later they take you know a 2-1 series lead that was the turning point oh fucking man <laughs> I love Mark Andre Fleury, but not after last year. Uh, and you know who scored that goal in Game Three to to win the game for the Vegas Golden Knights was William Carlson, who had uh, an incredible year last year. Um, he gets resigned. Uh, they give him a one year contract for five point two five million dollars, and the reason they do that is because. Uh, well, it's a good reason. Uh, he, you know, he had one good season. They got to make sure this guy's legit. He had put up 78 points last year, uh, 43 goals, which was third in the league. Uh, but this stat's crazy to me. So in his first four pre- previous seasons, he had a combined 50 points and 18 goals. Uh, and he had, you know, 50 points in four seasons. He had 78 in one season. Uh, I understand why they gave him the one-year contract. I know he was fighting for more, but... I take that bridge deal, uh, kind of, again, one of those deals where show me what you can do and then we'll pay you. Um, crazy. And then this another stat that just blew me away. Uh, he had the best plus minus in the league uh, at plus 49, which is insane. And that is 13 more. That's 13 better than the second place, which happens to be his uh, teammate, uh, Jonathan Marcheseau. So... What can you say about Vegas? Uh, incredible. Now, some news this year that uh, Nate Schmidt uh, is going to be serving a 20-game suspension for violating the performance-enhancing substance po- uh, program. Uh, he will be allowed to return uh, November 18th against the Oilers, one of the breakout players last year. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they cope with it. But I say that, but, you know, that you know, we were talking earlier um they don't have one first line. They have a bunch of second lines. That's the same thing with their defense. Like they don't have like a pair that's going to scare you away, but they have a bunch of, you know, top four, um, not necessarily top two, but top four defensemen that uh, it's just, I can't get over it, man. It's insane. Uh, it it's, it was, anymore. <laughs> listen, I, I was on the other side. I was, I was happy to just see, um, I was happy to see him. I, I first of all, jerseys are select, which makes me like them immediately. But uh, man, I don't know how they got them. They are, but here, here's the thing. Now, I'll take a couple another alternate takeaways from that that stellar season. Is that first of all, it proves that depth matters, and you might see a little bit of a shift with maybe how uh, drafting happens and maybe how teams start rebuilding. Uh, yeah, for sure. Like seriously, like look, start the. You know, Big players like JT and Matthews and you know, you know Sidney Crosby and Malkin, they're important, right? I mean, they're they're going to be important. I mean, you can't can't say, you know, don't drop those guys for second line players, right? But at the same time, you know, if you're in a position like I don't know, say say a team like the Red Wings, right, where you you should be in an attempt of a rebuild, 
maybe you can get some cheap second liner. Yeah. And start rebuilding that way. You know what I mean? It, it, it's just a weird shift. And, and to me, the fact that they really didn't have any two, ba- they have stars now. They have Paul Stassi this year. Like that's, yeah. that would say that's their Max first Pacioretty. legitimate star and Max Pacioretty. Yeah. Like now they have some star power and Flurry's still there. So you might see them back. You don't know. Oh, I think, uh, yeah, I think for sure. I mean, and, and one thing we should mention is uh, that stadium was rocking all year. And I oh think my that definitely God. helped them. Uh, you had the first game, their inaugural game at home, I should say, the first home game was uh, right after the Vegas shooting. And it, just something from that game on, it was just, it was like destiny. And, felt it. You and felt un- it. Unfortunately, you know, they 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 lost in that same building uh, in the Stanley Cup final. But, I mean, again, they shouldn't even have been there. You can't complain. Uh, Vegas, um, you know, as much as, uh, as much as, I hate to say it. I got to give you a round of applause from from uh, last year. Hopefully, you know, I don't I don't want them to be like good for one year and then suck. Like I, I want to see them competitive. They got a nice little rivalry now with the Sharks. Um, it, it was, you know, getting a little chippy last uh, in that series. So hey, man, it calls for some scrappy hockey. <clears throat> oh yeah, for sure. And, scrappy uh, hockey's good hockey. And yeah, so that, that's good stuff. But yeah, like I said, Vegas is uh. Vegas as a team that I think will have another good year. Uh, moving on, now we have the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, they went 44, 25, and 13 last year, 101 points. Uh, snuck by the Sharks for the second uh, spot in the Pacific last year, which ended up not mattering because they got home ice. Uh, they got swept. Uh, <laughs> uh, their big news this year, uh, I it literally just came out the other day, is Corey Perry is going to be out for a couple months. He... Uh, tore, I believe, again, tore his meniscus in uh, pregame warm-ups uh, the other night in the preseason game, and he yeah. is done so uh, for a couple months. Uh, the big story uh, with them that is going to, you know, th- that happened last year that I don't see changing this year is John Gibson, uh, a rock back there for them and goal, really, like, saved their bacon a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, he's one of the best, better goalies in the league and, and was also up there at, for Vesna uh, voting, and rightfully so. You know, he ended up not winning it, but uh, definitely, um, you know, one of uh, he, he's a really good goalie. He's a big body. Uh, and, uh, you know, I hope uh, for his sake. Uh, <laughs> he, he was also a guy last year that got peppered, so maybe for his sake, maybe – Keep the shots down a little bit. Uh, Maybe that, I don't know. That, that would be nice. I um, mean, generally, you want to do that anyway. Yeah. Well, you would think, but um, <laughs> yeah, crazy stuff. Like I'm looking at the stats now. Like he, uh, the the Ducks gave up the sixth most amount of shots in the league last year, thirty three point one a game. Uh, you know, that's not generally the greatest thing. Uh, so you might want to limit that a little bit. <laughs> uh, and and we'll see there. Um. Next, we well, you already know we're going to the San Jose Sharks, <laughs> my team. Uh, last year finishing uh, 45, 27, and 10, 100 points, uh, third in the Pacific. Uh, like I said, right behind Anaheim. Uh, unfortunately, we talked about it before they lost in the second round to Vegas. Uh, and this has been a great off season. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, we there were a lot of rumors last year at the trade deadline. That uh, Eric Carlson uh, might be a shark. He might go to Vegas, might go to Tampa. Well, he ultimately goes to the Sharks, uh, which makes me very happy. And uh, like I said before, they didn't give him much for him. Uh, they gave him Chris Tierney, who is a guy I really liked. Third, you know, but he's a third line center. We're talking about Eric Carlson here. Uh, they gave up Dylan Demello, who is a fringe, uh, excuse me, NHL defenseman, and then prospects and draft picks. I mean. It's Eric Carlson. Like, if you're, if that's all you're giving up, go for it. Um, Carlson has not signed an extension yet, which worried me. But then I was reading that uh, he has, he has the, so he's looking for an eight-year extension, right? Because uh, that's what teams can give uh, him. If you're the the rule in the NHL is if you're on a team for a certain amount of time, they can give you an eight-year extension when other teams can only give you a seven. So he has to wait till February to do that. To be honest with you, I'm still a little nervous because I, I he's saying, oh, my heart is still in Ottawa and stuff like that, which I guess power to you because I don't know how you 
look, I, I'm sure it's a great city, but what Melnick and Dorian did to you, you know, out there, I don't know about that. Like, look, again, we talked, we already talked earlier about how people will like teams for any given reason, but I mean, he, like, the fact that, like, uh, the story broke I, I, uh, that he apparently was never in uh, discussion with uh, Ottawa's board since November. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. What's happening there? What are you doing? And, and, you know, maybe the the big reason for him liking it there is I know he did a lot of community work and and the fans were great. And and that's great. The problem is, you know, at the end of the day, you're in the NHL and you're an NHL player. And, you know, your your owner is literally ruining the team you play for. And uh, GM is just a puppet of that owner. So, you know, I, I... I hope, obviously, I hope he resigns. Uh, I, I think if they have a strong showing this year, and I think he'll really like the crowd. Uh, we always have one of the better atmospheres in the league. Uh, I, you know, I don't see any reason why he wouldn't resign. If you um, don't tear the roof off the place when Eric Carlson first hits the ice in the regular season, you're you're gonna yeah, blow it. Yeah. Like, listen, five months is a lot of time and a lot of hockey. So yeah. he he could easily just fall in love with San Jose. So. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, we have the, you know, we struck out on John Tavares over the summer, um, maybe a little bit of a busting in the disguise because now, you know, we have all this money. It, it, he can, he'll, I, I would suspect Carlson is probably uh, like an 11, like he'll probably sign for 11 over seven years, mm-hmm. uh, maybe 12. Uh, it doesn't matter. We have $14 million uh, or we uh, e- either way, I don't know how much we have currently, but we have just give him the damn him. money. Give him, I don't, you can give him whatever he fucking wants. Make sure he's on the team next year. <laughs> uh, they also cleaned up a lot of things, uh, with their you know contracts, uh, getting extensions. Uh, you have Logan Couture, my favorite player, uh, getting an eight year for eight. Uh, Evander Kane, who they got from the Buffalo Sabres last year. Um, getting a seven for seven million dollars a year, and that's one of those cases where he wasn't on the Sharks long enough to get the eight year, but he was fine with the seven, so he'll take the seven for seven. They also re-signed Thomas Hurdle, who was supposed to be an RFA uh, this year. They got him signed, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, for a four year at five point six two five a year. Uh, also, uh, they brought back uh, Jumbo Joe uh, Thornton. Uh, he was basically waiting to see if Tavares would sign, and then he was going to sign for whatever money was left over. Uh, I believe it ultimately was a one year, two million, something like that. Um, you know, he's basically just playing. He's made enough money in his career. He just wants a cup, and he wants it with San Jose. So uh, mm-hmm. he'll sign for whatever. Uh, as I talked about before, per ESPN, they have the number one ranked defense. Now you got a top uh, four of Eric Carlson, Brent Burns, uh, Mark Edward Vlasic, and Justin Braun. Um, unfortunately, San Jose doesn't get the. You know, it's a west. Co- it's a West Coast team in California. They don't get the best coverage. Uh, so obviously, everybody knows about Brent Burns and Eric Carlson, but Mark Edward, Mark Edward Vlasic in. You know, not only my opinion, because uh, I know it's coming from a Sharks fan, but on a lot of people's opinions, he is the best defensive defenseman in the league. Uh, he, uh, any time the best player goes out there, uh, he will be on the ice. Uh, he was a pair with Justin Braun, who's the other guy I was talking about. Uh, any time that the other team's top line was out, they're out. Um, they're playing 25 you know, minutes a game. Uh, and, and they're just shut down. Uh, and, yeah, it's it's... It's nice. <laughs> the the <laughs> fact that, you know, I, I think what they'll do, because that Vlasic Braun line has been a, a pairing for years. So, like, part of me thought they weren't going to split it up, but you have to. I mean, I think if you put Burns with Vlasic, because uh, Burns has his uh, defensive uh, miscue sometimes, and, and Vlasic, or uh, excuse me, Carlson with Braun, I think that that'd be good. Like I said, I mean, any of that of those four in any combination would really work for me. Um, and, you know, uh, behind them, if anything gets behind them, they have Martin Jones still in that, who uh, that save percentage is not right. He did not have a nine save percentage last year. He had a .915 save percentage. You are uh, losing it, my friend. 
I, dude, I haven't slept in fucking days. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, 0. 0.915 save percentage and a 2.5 uh, five goes against, which, to be honest, like he, those numbers don't look great, but he also had a really bad start to the season for some reason. He was very hot and cold in the start of the season. Uh, I don't have uh, the numbers in front of me, but uh, if you look him up, like his numbers in the back half of the season were the best. Like I think it's either uh, the best or the second best in the league. Um, he really turned it on. And you know what? He didn't have the greatest start of the year, but Aaron Dell, uh, the backup, uh, came in kind of out of nowhere. Uh, nine, I did it again. See, what, what's going on here? What are you doing? 0. 0.914. Uh, say percentage with a 2.64 goals against average. If you can get you know that out of your backup, and he played 22 games, uh, there's no complaining. Um, look, I think I, I've been saying this for a long time. I think the Sharks are one piece away. I think they just got their piece. I think this is the time. This is you know they got to the final uh, against the Penguins and. They deserve to be there. Don't get me wrong, but they also got ca- literally carried by Martin Jones that that playoffs. Like you know, he was the guy. You know, maybe take a little stress off of him, get some guys, get a great defenseman. Uh, now you have probably you know a lot of people would argue, but I'll say a top five. You got two of the best out of the top five in the league, uh, defensemen. So uh, things looking up for the Sharks. Hopefully. They uh, turn it around. Uh, at this point of the show, we have a few teams left, and I will preface this by saying these are the teams that we s- did not spend too much time on. Uh, mm-hmm. But, you know, we have enough NHL knowledge where uh, I think we can get through it. Uh, starting off with the LA Kings, uh, 45, 29, and 8, 98 points in that tight Pacific division. Uh, of course, they got swept in the first round. Uh, by the Vegas Golden Knights, and the only reason they were in any, any of those games was because Jonathan Quick literally stood on his head. Incredible. Uh, still one of the, the – the flexibility of that dude. <laughs> he's – he – I swear, he's like Mr. Fantastic. Like, the, yeah. like, stretching his arms and limbs. Like, his – he'll be on the right – you know, he'll be on the right-hand side, and he'll be able to just reach with his arm all the way across the uh, – yeah, the, the freaking diameter of the net, like it's 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 uncanny. Yeah, it's how crazy. quick his glove is. I mean, not no pun intended, seriously, but like his <laughs> glove, it's it's insane. He's just one of those special goalies. Man. It's it's hard. I, I mean, hate and- this, I hate this franchise, but God, I love Jonathan Quick. Yeah, no, um, and I mean to go off of how good of a year he had, the uh, the Kings were. Uh, first in the league in goals against per game, and also first in penalty kill uh, on the season at 85%. So good stuff there. Um, you know, one of the things with the, the Kings is, and we've really seen it in that series with the Golden Knights, is that this the speed of the game really caught up to them, right? So Vegas is this fast, you know, fast-paced team. Uh, they'll they'll forecheck you hard. They'll get on you. and you know, the Kings aren't really built for that. They're built for a more mm-hmm. physical game, uh, kind of not slow paced, I want to say, but take like, I don't know. It's it's more methodical, I guess. Right. Um, the slow league, and steady. Yeah, the league is the league is transitioning. Uh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be something to watch here because um, you know, they also have a, a, a little bit of an aging core. Um. You know what? What happens? Like, uh, it's just something that's going to eventually catch up to them. Um, again, you've seen Vegas literally just make them their bitch in the playoffs. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, we'll see. All right, next team we have is the Calgary Flames. Uh, they had a record last year of thirty-seven, thirty-five, and ten, eighty-four points. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and they. Uh, the their one notable signing this year, besides the trade I talked about earlier with the Carolina Hurricanes, uh, they signed James Neal from the Vegas Golden Knights on a five-year deal. Um, you know, I, I Calgary every year it's it's the same thing. There's there's a few teams in this league that every year you're like, this has got to be the year to make the playoffs and make some noise. And every year they're always short. Uh, yep. Calgary finally got a, a goalie last year in Mike Smith, who had a, a decent year, nothing 
spectacular. He was also injured um, for part of it, so uh, you kind of have to take that with a grain of salt. But uh, is you know is this the piece where they finally get? They finally happened. I mean, James Neal was a guy after we struck out on Tavares. The Shark said is that I would have liked them to sign. Uh, I really like how he plays. He's one of those guys that's that are, is is gritty and will get into the areas, but he can also bang in in the goals. So uh, I really like that. Now we'll kind of see how Noah Hannafin fits in with Calgary. They have a really good defense too, underrated defense. Um, so we'll kind of see kind of see what happens uh, with them. But again, it's just like every year, it's like they they got it. This is the year they finally make some noise, and and nope, <laughs> mm-hmm. every year. So, uh, you know, I I hope for their sake and their fans' sake, because trust me, they uh, their fans were not happy last year. I remember the Sharks beat them in late in the season when they were already on like a terrible losing streak, and basically that knocked them out of the playoffs. And the responses and the mentions on their Twitter account was oh bad. my god. It was Dumpster bad. Fire. <laughs> and one of the reasons is because of them not being able to score. And God, excuse me. I'm having problems over here. Uh they <laughs> were they were fifth last in uh, goals for per game last year. Uh two point six three goals. You know, does uh does James Neal change that? We'll have to see. Um like I said, like just can you be good? Can you just be please, good please. Uh oh. I like the Mulligan are kind of soft spot team. Yeah, don't know and, if that's because of uh Gujo or not, but yeah, local boy, um, local no, boy. Well, uh, and you know we talked about it earlier. I have a new coach, so and Bill Peters. Um, a lot of turnover in the league this year. Maybe it's just like doing a lot of research on it, but it just feels like a lot of turnover. Um, with teams and 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 trading, uh, like coaches being moved and trades and stuff like that. Uh, so. We will move on to the uh, Edmonton Oilers, who, man, did they have a disappointing year <laughs> last year. Jesus. Uh, I actually, I don't quote me on this, but I'm like 99% sure. I think they were the Vegas favorite uh, starting the year last year to win the cup. Um, were they? I believe so. Hmm. I mean, part of that has to do with how good Connor McDavid is. And, and they, you know, thought that they get better goaltending than they did. but. Uh, they did not, and they went 36, 40, and 6, 78 points. Uh, Connor McDavid <laughs> did all he <laughs> – he tried. He tried his hardest. He really did. Uh, Jesus, I, I really feel bad for this guy. He had 108 freaking points, uh, led the league. Um, Like, uh, he just – he tried so hard. He tried to carry him on his back. It didn't end up working. Um, But, yeah, just – I, I – it amazes me how good Connor McDavid is, and I know like that's what everybody's going to talk about when they they talk about the the Edmonton Oilers. But there's a reason for that because this guy is, in my opinion, the best player in the NHL by not by far. I shouldn't say that, but he is he's so good. Um, and, and yeah, it's electrifying to watch him on the ice. And when your team plays yes. against him, it is it's tough to <laughs> tough to watch, but one of the things that really like screwed with the uh <coughs> excuse me screwed with the Oilers last year was they had at, and they brought it up at the end of the year but they had a historically bad power play um for for that year so i i heard the stats somewhere i don't know what it is but their home power play so their home power play uh percentage last year was at some point so low that it was the worst in like that, like ever, like ever. Really? And then they finally kind of brought it up at the end, but they had the worst power play in the league last year, 14.8%. Um, that's, that's not going to do it chief. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and then they also finished the year. Um, I mean, not too bad, but they finished uh, about mid mid table uh, in terms of goals for, um, I mean, most of that was David. So, uh, also their goaltending was not up to to where it used to, you know, was the year before. Uh, I mentioned earlier, Cam Talbot literally played as much as he could, but he did not have the greatest year last year. Um, <clears throat> 67, 
games played is just too much. Uh, he led the league in losses with 31. Uh, that's not a great uh, <laughs> mm. uh, stat, but I think uh, whenever you have Connor McDavid on your team, you have a chance to turn it around. So uh, that that's all I got to say about the Oilers. And then the last two teams we have here uh, are teams that, like, I don't remember last time. I mean, Vancouver actually wasn't too long ago. They were good, but it's been a while. Uh, the Vancouver Canucks finished last year 31, 40, and 11, 73 points. Um, geez. <laughs> wow. Look, it's a young team. Brock Besser was uh, uh, a really nice you know, rookie last year. was in uh, the Calder conversation for a long time before he got injured. Um, but what do you what do you say about you know like I I don't know it, it's it's tough to gauge with them now they lost the Sedins obviously retiring that was a nice little uh, I don't want to say retirement tour but a nice little uh, uh, exit exit I guess would be the word that they got um, they look Vancouver has some very good prospects don't get me wrong but they're still a few years out. Uh, from really making a noise. I'm going to keep it short and simple with them and because, you know, I think they're a team, again, that could be good in the future. Uh, they have a lot of high draft picks. Uh, they have one draft pick who I think will, is going to have a very good year. We'll get to later. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep it short with them. Uh, I think but, they, uh, they struggle this year. But, uh, you know, uh, you also got to signify the end of the era. Yeah, which is one hell of an era. I, I, I'll say this. Uh, as you know, the Sharks being in the and the and the division with them in the playoff series they had, and I'm not kidding when I say this, they were the scariest duo to play up against because they would make passes that nobody should have ever made, Beh- not looking at each other behind the back between like the, it was crazy. Like like you'll never, never get chemistry like that. Oh no, never again. And like. It's just the passes they were making, even like last year, like when the Canucks were having a you know bad year, there were still games um, against the Sharks where they're just making stuff happen. Um, and, and it's 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 a yeah end of an era. Uh, we'll we'll see if they you know maybe try to do something with uh, with the Canucks in terms of maybe joining uh, a management team, something like that. You never know. Um, I mean, there is two of them, so it makes it a little bit more complicated. Uh, yeah. but, uh, yeah. So it's just, it's a shame that they never raised it. Yeah. Yeah. That's sad times. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a real thing to me, man. That loyal, loyal, loyal guys. Yeah, for sure. Like, like yeah. stupid loyal. Um, it's, it's just, which yeah. is, I I think we me and you both have a like a being loyal is important I think so, um, yeah that that's listen we're listen we, I, I'm like all those players I'm trying to say <laughs> yeah I I listen I I have to ha- I I get guys getting their money's worth right like you know you got a guy like Eric Carlson right he's gonna get paid because he deserves to be he's an elite defenseman. Yeah. Right. But the guys, especially guys like the Sedins, who have stayed with one team throughout their entire career just because they love it there. And not to mention, like, the past few seasons have not been the greatest. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, no. And they were, listen, they were good, but it just, it never just fully came through, which is a shame to me. I mean, yeah. it's just, that's just what it is to me. I, I uh, you know, loved watching them play. It's, it's just going to be a completely different city without them um i do hope they get into something with with that team still afterwards yeah uh yeah it, it, it's just it's one of those sucky things that's all but I, I i the guys who could stay loyal are guys i respect a lot especially to a franchise of the canucks who have had tremendous ups and downs for yeah. the past few years it's it's you know yeah all right and our last team on the 31 teams holy shit we're here uh, the Arizona Coyotes, which, uh, going out with a bang, I see. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, 29, 41, and 12 last year, 70 points. Uh, if you remember, they had uh, a historic start to the season for the wrong reasons. Um, I, I, I don't remember what it was. Like I said, this is where our research 
not doing research is lacking us here, but we ran out of time, so sorry about that. But anyway, uh, they started the. They didn't get like a their first regulation win in like like over fifteen games or something like that. It was crazy. that really what it was? Oh my! It was something like that. It was uh, so first regulation win because uh, I think they had a shootout win actually against the Flyers. <laughs> of course was, it was, and that was their first win of the season. But their first regulation win was there. Flyers can't do shootouts, so this doesn't even hurt me anymore. <laughs> no, I mean you're you're used to it. You know, and the sad thing is, Arizona actually had like one of the best second halves of any team in the league. It's just that their first half was so bad that they couldn't make up anything, and I mean they still were the worst team in the Pacific. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's just again that start really killed them. Uh, we mentioned the trade earlier. Uh, Alex Galchenyuk coming over. He has four point nine. Uh, he uh, he has a two year contract worth four point nine for the next two years. Uh, four point nine being paid each season. Uh, they got Michael Grabner in free agency. Uh, he's getting paid three point three five a year for the next three years. Um, they also made what <laughs> this is just because of course with Arizona, uh, they're you know. Everybody dumps their players that they don't want anymore. And Marion Hosa, if you remember, had the skin disease to the jersey. And, yeah. uh, well, of course, uh, he was moved this offseason by the Chicago Blackhawks. So now he's sitting on IR. Um, he's not, you know, he'll be getting paid, but he's not going to uh, hit. Go against the salary cap. Wow. I'm struggling. Uh, they also got Vinny Hinnestroza from that deal, who's a nice little player, uh, 1.5 a million for the next two years. Um, and he is, a, like I said, a nice little player. And their one bright, like really bright spot uh, for a lot of the season last year was Clayton Keller. Uh, again, a guy that was in conversation uh, to um, win the Calder for a while, and then he kind of tapered off at the end. Uh, 82 games last year, uh, um, 23 goals, 42 assists, 65 points in your rookie season is not too shabby, especially on a team like that. Um, it's good. And you know what? I think I've said this for, like, I've said this for all the teams before. Again, it's just a team that they have a bright future. They just got to put it together. Uh, I, I, Antti Ranta last year, who they got, uh, from New York, um, he was actually decent when he wasn't injured. Um, again, going to keep it pretty short with these guys. Uh, hopefully, at some point, they turn it around because uh, I think they could have th- – that could be a good rivalry with Vegas, a uh, little yeah. desert rivalry. So maybe we'll see that in the future. But we are finally through all 31 teams. Now we will give uh, – <laughs> just, you know, took too long, but whatever. Yes. It's a podcast. Uh we are going to give our predictions uh, for the West now, and then we will do our uh, awards, um, uh, who we think will win the, the main awards, and then we'll give our Stanley Cup uh, predictions. Well, so, well, we got to do the West playoff picture first, right? Yeah, so we're going to do the West now. So right. uh, in the Central Division, this is for me, uh, I have the Jets, the Preds, and the Blues uh, in that order. Uh, that, you know, the Jets, uh, I think, overtake the Preds this year. I really like Connor Hellebuck. I think Rene maybe takes a little bit of a step back. I, I mean, he did win the Vesna last year, so there's a good chance because it's hard to you know repeat a performance like he did. But I really like the Jets uh, and their depth there and, the, and their top two lines. Uh, Preds, you know, again, a contender. I just think the Jets are a little bit better. Excuse me. And the Blues, talked about it earlier, really like the uh, additions they made. Uh, and and I think they'll they'll be a, a team back in the playoffs this year. And then in the Pacific, of course, because uh, I do this, and maybe it's bias, whatever. <laughs> the Sharks are number one. No, I, honestly, I do think they have a, a legitimate chance. I, I don't think the Pacific is very a very strong division. I think it's up for grabs for them, either between Vegas or San Jose. I'll take the Sharks here just on the fact that that defense is elite. Uh, I have the Vegas Golden Knights coming in second. And here's the hot take of the episode. I got the Edmonton Oilers on the back of Connor McDavid getting that three spot, getting back into the playoffs. And uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I all I'm saying is you can't just dis- like you can't count out Connor McDavid. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, and then for my wildcard teams, they're both coming from the Central. I think it's a better division. Uh, there's better teams. I got the Stars finally getting back in the playoffs. They've missed the past two years, and a team that really should not be missing, I think, gets back in. And uh, I'm going to go with the Colorado Avalanche. I think um, they're young. You know, we talked about their young core, but I think they're, uh, you know, with the addition of Grubauer, uh, if he ends up getting, you know, some starts or at least splitting the games with Varlamov, I think that's a decent tandem. And, uh, you know, you can't, like I said, Nathan McKinnon, uh, great season last year. I don't expect anything to change. So that is my West prediction. Bobby, you can give yours. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, I just had to swallow something. I know what just happened there. Uh, <laughs> starting with the Central, I got the Preds at the top. I'm a firm believer in the Predators. If, if, if uh, Rene, I mean, if they, I, I have them having another president trophy season if possible, which may or may not be a hot take, not sure. Um, but uh, if Pecorine can stand on his head a little more in the postseason or their prospect goalie starts showing up, then I think we are in for a Pred Stanley Cup run. Like at them at the top of the Central Division. Uh, followed by the Jets. I mean, the Jets, I feel like they just get better with each season. They've been just on the slow, gradual growth kind of thing. Uh, and that, that top line is nasty. So. Uh, have them taken uh, second spot in the central division, and then I had the Blues. A little bit of bias just because uh, I like the Blues a lot, um, but I still think they're still an elite team, so I have them rounding out the third. Uh, going to the Pacific, I'm going to share in the glory of the San Jose Sharks here with the top, with the top spot in the Pacific division. Um, I it is so hard to argue against this team. They just re- they basically just resigned everybody, and then just signed Carlson. Their team is stable and ready to go. And I think this could be their run. Not quite sure. And just a little bit of spoiler for what's ahead. I don't have them in the Stanley Cup, my Stanley Cup prediction, but they are a close freaking second. Uh, Golden Knights running out of the second spot. And uh, they're going to be scary too, especially with the uh, addition of Paul Stastny and Max Pacioretty. Um, Flurry still being in that, like this team still going to be good and the people who are hating on them especially tyler here uh <laughs> they're going to get more and more pissed off as this team continues to exist so uh i got the second spot and i'm going to share in the hot take the hot oilers <laughs> go to the third i to me this came to more of uh okay if it's not the oilers then who else is it gonna be right that's just Connor mcdavid is throwing up you know record-breaking numbers season in season out there's really nothing else happening um at least i'm sorry i lost my spot at least in the pacific division that would warrant uh someone taking that spot flames need to get their stuff together canucks really have nothing coyotes really have nothing the ducks eh maybe but probably not so i'm gonna share on that hot take and then have the Oilers. And then for uh, the wild card um, for the West, I, I believe we had the same. Uh, I have the Stars at the top. I, I love the Stars. And Sagan signed is uh, definitely going to help. And then we got the Abs at the second. Uh, don't think they're all there yet, but they're still strong enough, I think, to make the wild card. But they're not going to go any further than the first round, I think. So um, that's, that's my West playoff picture. And then we will get to the awards real quick. So we have the five awards we're going to uh, predict are the Hart, the Calder, the Vesna, the Norris, and the Art Ross. Uh, starting with the Hart, uh, I have Connor McDavid. Um, look, this award is given to the player that's most valuable to their team. If they make the playoffs, he will be the reason. Uh, and, um, yeah, so that's what I have, uh, you know, him at Hart. And the same thing with the Art Ross. Like, if he's going to have a great season, he he probably will be leading the the league um, in points like he did last year. Uh, I'll just, I guess, I'll go through all mine, and then I'll give it over to you. The Calder, uh, I talked about him earlier on the Canucks. I have Eli- Elias Pettersson. Uh, he was lighting it up over in Sweden. Uh, really good stuff. I think you know it's going to be tough just because of the team he's on. Um, but if he if he can show out, uh, there's no reason he can't win it. Uh, here's a 
I don't know if it's a hot take. I mean, he literally won. He was second last year in voting. But I have Connor Hellebuck. Uh, I'm really high on this guy. Like uh, I talked about how good I thought his positioning was earlier. He's very calm. Uh, you know, he's, he doesn't seem to get rattled. Uh, I really like Connor Hellebuck. Uh, and I think the team in front of him allows him to have a chance uh, to win the Vesna just because, uh, you know, I, that defense is good. And, and um, you know, they have, uh, even though it doesn't dir- directly correlate, I think, you know, the whole team as a whole, the offense as well, I think will uh, as a whole kind of help him out with that. And then, uh, this is totally biased. So I'm not even gonna. No, I, I, honestly, it's very possible. I have Eric Carlson winning the Norris because uh, I think I pro I think he probably is talent wise the best defenseman in the world. And now that he's being put on a good team, I think he'll be able to show that. Um, also, you know, if they do end up splitting Burns and Carlson, uh, that's two lines you got to worry about uh, defensive lines. Uh, and and those guys love getting shots on that, and the Sharks uh, will, you know, let that happen. Uh, they'll definitely give them chances. So I have Carlson uh, winning the, the Norris there, and uh, that is my predictions for the awards, and Bobby, I will hand it over to you. Okay, so hmm. uh, a little bit different. I, uh, part of this is I was just kind of playing devil's advocate, so just take, take mine, obviously. <laughs> so uh, I have the heart with John Tavares. I mean... Here's the thing. I understand that the Leafs have more players besides John Tavares, so he's not going to be totally carrying this team, but I think we're about to see a special season from him. Uh, he's playing for his hometown team. He's he's with uh, with some good guys behind him and, and with them on the side and, and even on the back end. I, I don't know. He's, I feel like he's going to put up some numbers. Yeah, I, I really it, do. it does. It does help. He might. He'll probably be playing with either William Nylander or Mitch Marner. So. <laughs> yep. So. Uh, yep. So he'll he'll be there, man. I mean, I just he's going to be in the news all season. So that's what I think. Uh, for the Calder, uh, I got uh, Rasmus Dahlin, or Dahlin, however you want to call it. I I really don't know how to exactly pronounce his name. Um. So, here's what I like. He's fast. He is stupid fast, right? And he's also going to be the player who can make a play happen from seemingly out of nowhere. And especially for Buffalo, that kind of needs someone like that who really needs the um, needs the kind of playmaker. A two-way defenseman is going to be the guy to really do it. He'll put it on net. Um, I don't know. I just I, I like him for some reason. There's, there's I don't know what else to say about him. I, I like him a lot. So I kind of see him just coming into Buffalo and just making some noise for himself. Um, I also want to point out something I, I, I found interesting uh, when looking, looking him up earlier. So, uh, obviously, the, you know, this was years ago, but apparently at, at, at one point in time, at one point in time in his under-16 league in Sweden, he had 48 points in 15 games <laughs> with 19 goals and 29 assists. I don't know, but that struck me as just nuts. So, I don't know. Just something and, about it. Uh, keep in mind, you know, it's under 16. He's not playing with a bunch of – like, the, he's playing with elite players, like – Right. Have a future. Like, he's not yeah, just playing with guys who can't one. skate. Yeah, U16 Division One. Uh, in league coping, I think is how you say it. I'm sure. I don't yeah, know. Just, yeah. And that, that comes from like elite – that comes from eliteprospects.com. Uh, so, I don't know. I just I like him for some reason. I I haven't really seen much of his play, but from everything I read and hear about him, I he's the type of player that I, I feel like I would respect. So, got to get him for the call there. Uh, the Vizina. I got Flurry. All right. Listen. He carried the Knights. Oh, yeah. Carried the Knights. And those who say otherwise can come see. But, dude, I don't... I, he'll, he's going to do it again. I mean, listen, like, I literally just said earlier that they're going to have uh, – the Knights have a little more star power this time around, right? I, I said this already. But their big player is still going to be Flurry. It doesn't matter. And with the numbers he's been putting up, and Ty, you and me were talking about earlier, they're ridiculous. They're absolutely right. ridiculous. Yeah. Like, and he's still at this elite level. So I think Flurry's just still going to be standing on his head. And also, listen, he's won cups before with the Penguins, right? But I feel like he feels something special in Vegas – I feel like he does want to hoist one for them, so oh, yeah. so I'm sure he's gonna want some uh, 
want a little bit of redemption. And, and we talked about this before. He's out of all the players in the league. I think he's definitely having the most fun out there. Oh my god, yeah. yeah. The, the whole uh, he's, he did some water sprays this season. He did the, the finger in the ear thing. So what's his name? Uh, oh, who, who do that to? Oh my uh, god, I know who you're talking. I can't think, but I remember this. Uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, just... which was pretty funny. It was during a game, during a little scrap in the crease. But uh, and I just saw a video the other day of him uh, pranking Crosby and Malkin by t- like tying their jerseys oh, inside yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> which listen, I hate the Penguins. I hate Crosby and Malkin. And Flurry was a pain in the ass to deal with. And you know, uh, when the Flyers and Penguins playoff series. But man, he looks like he's just having the time of his life. So, all right, going to the Norris. All right, I have Eric Carlson. I just like Tyler here. I. Dude, I don't know how you even argue this. I really don't. I mean, he's gonna just the Sharks are ridiculous as is. They're going to be insane this season, and Eric Carlson is going to be a big reason why. And like Tyra said earlier, he's the missing piece. I feel like I'm with him on this one. So um, I have Eric Carlson taking the Norris. Uh, the Art Ross. Uh, so uh, doing a lot of fantasy hockey scouting. Uh, it's McDavid and Kucherov at the top because of Kucherov's uh, insane point to- uh, total last season. And I, I think he's due for another uh, uh, another big point season. So I have Kucherov taking the Art Ross. Um, more of this playing just devil's advocate more than anything else. I mean, I love Connor McDavid, but I also really like Kucherov, and especially with him. He got resigned this season. We talked about it earlier, right? So, yep. Yep. Uh, so he resigned. I think he's hungry. I think he's ready. Uh, and he's just ready to just completely go lights out this season. So I got Kucherov for the Art Ross. And last but not least, as we end this episode, we're going to give her a way too early Stanley Cup prediction. Uh, and, too goddamn early. Yeah, and I know what I'm just going to go for it. Uh, <laughs> you know, if totally biased, I'll say it. But uh, but I, I honestly believe it. I think the Sharks were one piece away. I think they got it. I'm going to mm-hmm. go Sharks over the Lightning in six games. Um that that would be a fucking amazing matchup. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'd be able to handle it, but it would be an amazing that matchup. That would be a series. Both crowds are hot. Like Tampa Bay has a hot Oh yeah. Uh, has a hot crowd and it, it, so does San Jose. Oh my god, that would be an amazing series. I'm with that. Could you crazy. imagine? It would be Victor Hedman and Ryan McDonough versus Eric Carlson and Brent Burns. <laughs> oh man! Now I want to see that. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, I'm, dude, I'm for it, dear lord. I, right. whoo, that would be awesome. All right, and then you can go with uh, your prediction. All right, so I already said earlier I'm a believer in the Preds, so I have the Preds, and I have them playing the Lightning. And although I'm a believer in the Preds, I have the Lightning winning this one in seven games. Uh this, this series is going to be a complete back and forth, but if Rene plays as playoff Rene has played, then it, it, he may be the determining factor in why Tampa Bay will hoist the cup this time around. And I have it in seven games. I mean, offensively, they're insane. That's another matchup I would definitely love to see seven games go for in the Stanley Cup. I would absolutely love to watch that. Um, yeah. I, I feel like that would just be a very intense and scrappy series, and I'm here for it. So that's my uh, that's my pick. All right, and that will do it for this long ass podcast. Uh, Not even really podcast, just episode. Oh, what's ep- up yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. This is uh, this is not going to take place of a regular episode. Just wanted to throw this out there. Uh, we will be doing more season previews in the future. Uh, also, not sure how we want to do this if we're going to cut it up. Uh, in the two halves or, or what you obviously know when it releases, but we're looking at about a three hour time frame. So mm-hmm. we'll see that. Uh, we hope you enjoyed. Uh, hopefully the hardcore hockey fans out there enjoyed the episode. Uh, I'm going to plug our Twitter uh, where you can find everything uh, updates about us. It's at come play network uh, on Twitter. And uh also, I think I believe at least all of our links there are for the other guys too. So, uh, or if not, you'll see us on there tweeting. So uh, don't worry about that. But uh, if you liked this video, uh, I hope you like it. If you uh, are just watching and haven't subscribed yet, I hope you subscribe. And uh, that is it for this marathon podcast. And, and, uh, and uh, a couple things real quick. I just want to get out of the way if you yeah, don't mind. Uh, so there's a couple things. So you know, we put a lot of work into this. Uh, so Tyler has not slept. Uh, nope. I think it's been close to 24 hours at this point, if not 24 hours. 
Uh, Total Trooper, want to give the hats off to him, obviously. Uh, I, I helped as much as my, I could, but, uh, you know, I, I am a college student, so I can never commit to anything. It's amazing. I've been on every podcast so far. But, um, <laughs> you know, uh, we, we, we love doing this, and we're expanding. This is the first thing we've done te- it's technically outside of the podcast, and we're hoping to do more. We keep talking about it all the time. We're, we're working on the logistics of things, um, but we hope to make this into something great. Um, we would appreciate any support, even if that's just telling a friend or giving us a like or a comment. We would truly appreciate it. Again, we we'd absolutely adore doing this. Uh, you know, and we'll have more stuff coming up. Uh, I know coming up uh, next podcast that we're recording at some point uh, later this week, we are going to be giving our MLB postseason predictions and preview. Um, and we have some special guests. Um, not anybody that you guys would know, but people that we know. <laughs> so, but we haven't had, really had guests on the podcast yet. Uh, I'm, we're working that out. I'm not going to confirm or not uh, because I haven't been able to confirm with them yet. So might have some guests come aboard to talk because uh, they're big baseball heads, but we'll see. Um, and also we will be uh, sooner or later discussing the uh, NBA season coming up. Uh, not sure how in detail we'd be getting. Not sure how long that'll be. Uh, I probably will not be a part of that. That will probably be a uh, Tyler and Brendy episode. Uh, since they are more uh, NBA savvy than I am, I'll, I would just be there, uh, just, just I don't know, doing, <laughs> saying nothing really. I wouldn't be much part. So that'll probably be their thing. So be on the lookout for that and uh, other content. And uh, Tyler, I'll let you have finally close this out. Yeah, no, that was good. Uh, everything you said, I agree with. Like I said, we're still trying to work out things, uh, but I think things are going well. And uh you know we're having fun so again that is all if you like the video just give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already and we will see you next time on the come play podcast